This week on the PS Premiere Podcast, Dory makes a weird noise. I shout out my own name. Uh, James. And I am your new, 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 new host, Chill O'Brien. Wait, what? Hello and welcome to the 42nd episode of the PS Premiere Podcast, the only podcast that doesn't have a fully fledged intro yet. I am your new, 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 new host, Mitchell O'Brien, um, and today I am joined by James Smith, the old, old, old host. Hi, that's me. I'm the old, old, old host. Uh, I don't normally do uh, these things where I have to introduce myself. Um, but I guess you can find me at Untitled Smithy on the Twitters. And Sebastian Cardoni. Hi, I'm the ancient host of the OG host. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me at Little Seb ninety three. And Dory, Claire, Doreen Claire. Uh, is it Claire? I, I yeah, forget. Claire is fine. Claire. Um, cool. Yeah, you nailed it. Nailed it in one. Um, I am the, Absolutely. I've never been a host, and it, maybe it will never happen, and that's okay with me, uh, host. Um, yeah, you can find me also on the Twitters, uh, at Declare192, uh, and also uh, on Twitch, where I stream video games. Terrific. Well, uh, before you get into it, as always, be sure to leave a like on YouTube, or be sure to follow us on any of your preferred podcast services. And also, if you don't know already, we've recently opened up our Discord, so if you want to join that, just to chill, shoot the shit with us, join that. It'll be a good time. All right, well, get straight into it this week. Um, Dory, what have you been playing this week? All right, so I, I've been playing a, a couple things. Um, I'm real excited to talk about KO City a little later on, but for right now, um, the two big games I've been playing are Mass Effect 1 and uh, for the deepest dive, part of Minmax, and then the other thing is um, It Takes Two, which I just finished like an hour ago with my partner. Um, we weren't sure how much we had left. It turns out we had like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, but um, yeah, so I do want to talk about Mass Effect. I'm going to rant a little bit. Um, so I I think so. I've been play. I I put about 16 hours so far, and I'm not even a Vermeer. Um, if, if folks don't know, that's kind of, I think that's the later portion of the game. So I'm, I've just done Pharos and I've done a whole host of side missions and I'm going to do a whole bunch more. I'm basically going to do all the side missions in, before Vermeer, um, which is like this big stopping point for the deepest dive, the second part of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, so I, the positive stuff is I still feel like this game is really, really good writing wise. There's still some things that like haven't aged well, or, um, you know, there are certainly certain choices that don't make any sense because you might already know that information earlier and the game doesn't account for it um but for the most part like it's really well realized world it feels really lived in uh to use that old expression with video games um it feels like this was something that was brought to the drawing board and really at a complete stage um so yeah i still really love this game it's world it's characters i will say the gameplay is still the weakest part of mass effect one um i hate 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 the mako uh, I will never not hate the Mako. It doesn't matter how much Bioware did here. Mako is still an annoying vehicle to drive. Um, I, you know, I don't, it's it's nice to be able to drive on all these planets, but it does kind of hurt the pacing. And like, I don't know whose idea of a good time it was for me to scale up mountains so I can get debris and and, and fallen probes, but whoever did it, like I want them to get a uh, like a pay cut because like it is not fun and it's, um, it's just not it's not interesting um, i can 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 i be honest for a quick yeah. second though dory no don't lie to me a... lie to me okay well um i i don't like the mako either is this is you lying, lying? tell me the truth <laughs> this is... yeah no this has been like i do not mind the the um mako in this game despite despite everything i heard and like i know bioware patched it up a considerable yeah. amount i don't mind the mako in this game I'm to be completely honest. Maybe it, it it's just feels... because, uh, maybe it's just because the weapons are like super accurate and whatnot, <laughs> like probably too accurate for like a moving tank. But I, I find at least the combat aspect of the Mako super super satisfying. 
I like the, I like its weapons, but I never feel like it's very accurate. And I mean, I'm playing on a PS5. I don't know what you're playing mm. it on, but I never, yeah, I never. PS5 also, yeah. Okay, yeah, I never feel like it's super accurate. Um, and it's because I always feel like I have to sit in one place and then I can fire, and then I know it'll hit. If I'm moving around, like I'm less sure of my shots, which you know, I mean, that makes sense on a basic level. But I just wish. I wish the weaponry worked a little different. I think really the major change they made to the Mako was, um, I know some people say Mako, it's the same Final Fantasy VII debate. But, um, you know, the, I think the major thing that Bioware did was that they added the thrusters so that it's faster to move around and it's easier yeah. to climb up mountains, which I don't even want to imagine what it was like in the original because, like, it, it's, it saved me from, like, not being able to get up several mountains to farm resources or whatever uh, multiple times mm -hmm. at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm not, like, of the opinion, like, the, the Mako ruins this game or whatever, but, like, it's just, it is, it is a big part of, like, why I think Mass Effect 2 is so much stronger, because I think as they, as they moved on in the series, they veered away from it more and more, which I think is a good thing. Um, I just find it kind of boring. It's, like, nice to look at, but, like, I think it's boring, and the combat is, like, kind of iffy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hmm. not... It's not terrible, but it's it's just not very good, especially compared to the writing yeah. and the characters and the voice acting, you know? Yeah, I think... I, I think... I mean, I think the thing that's probably aged the worst, I'd have to say, besides, like, you know, the combat, which I still, you know, despite, like, I don't find terrible in this um, remaster... Yeah, that's okay. ...is, is probably just, like, exploring, like, just walking around in between conversations and what you call it, conversations and, like, actual combat, because, like, uh, let's just put it this way, like, the animations for when your character is sprinting, I think I mentioned this, like, a couple weeks back, but the the sprinting animations are very, very awkward. <laughs> yeah, and... It's like, and it's like me of... trying to run. Commander Shepard should be in much better shape <laughs> than me and be able to run much better than me, but she, yeah. but she can only run for, like a hallway's length and then she's just fatigued and i'm like <laughs> what did they teach her in the alliance fucking military and these are not unique insights by the way i've just kind of like like seen other people say that and i'm like that's completely true like she just runs the length of a hallway but but yeah. she's supposedly like this commander who's in top of her class or she fought the blitz mm -hmm. or whatever your backstory is and she's like mm -hmm. one of the best in the world but she could barely run a fucking hallway without being severely out of breath also uh, also i mean makes no sense. Uh, yeah, I was also going to say another thing I'm not too keen on, which I know is, like, isn't going to change and is a whole, is a part of the whole Mass Effect series, Ugh, excuse me, is the fact that I, I'm not a big fan of the upgrade system in this game, just because, I, in, like, in RPGs especially, I tend to prefer skill trees that have concrete like skills to them like an actual skill tree like if you put x amount of points into this you'll you'll get this ability whereas a lot of the time like like in mass effect especially it just feels like i'm putting points that just like in like incrementally increase like you know base stats or whatever like like i'm, I'm much more a fan of if, if it makes sense like all right, I'm going to put skill points into something so i can get like a brand new skill out of it or a brand new ability which i mean you can get in this but most of the time it's just putting points into like a stat or something that just you know like better health or better um assault rifle damage or something yeah like better that. electronics like, better armor yeah like yeah, yeah. Ex exactly like I'm, I'm a much more i'm much more of a fan of gi like give me an actual skill tree rather than just oh here's a bunch of outline like you know here's a bunch of um that's or whatever that you know supposedly make you feel stronger and whatnot but like you yeah. can't like in terms of like the overall gameplay experience and feel you feel barely any difference from the start of the game to like part way through yeah, the game i would agree i would agree with that i think the only thing that's made me feel different is the um the stuff that changes the kind of ammo that you're doing yeah, um, yeah, like, and the, then the like maybe the newer things. weapons that are like you know seven or up or five or up or something. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think like related to that, I think the menus are kind of clunky. This is kind of a nitpick. I don't think it's a huge issue, but I definitely think the the menus show their age. Um, it, yeah. it's a little tedious to go through all my weapons. Luckily, they do prioritize what the best weapon is for you, or at least what has the highest uh firepower first. 
So all you have to do is like cycle through and just press X. Unless you don't value firepower the most, then it gets tedious. Yeah, they don't really explain the weapon mod system to you at all. So they don't explain how to even do it. I had to ask somebody. No. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I just kept collecting all this ammo, and I was like, well, how do I even do it? And I just didn't worry about it. And then eventually oh, I was yeah. like, well, how do I do this to someone, And or yeah. how do I equip this? Yeah, I didn't even, like, know what it was about until I left the Citadel. So, like, the first, like, sort of part of the min-max deep dive. I had right. no idea what it was even about until I left the Citadel and actually just sort of went and toyed around into the menus for God knows how long. I think also uh, so far I will say in Mass Effect 1 that DLCs are very badly labeled. I did a DLC without even knowing it was a DLC. It was the Break the Sky one or Fall the, the, the Sky Fall. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I was going to say, do they actually label it as DLC? They don't label they it at like... all presented as a just a new quest it's or just something. another it's just another mission which is fine but like at least it's, i don't know it's another i wish thing, yeah, it, yeah it's yeah it's another I, thing I wish I there was like a like prompt like or yeah, yeah i wish there was a prompt exactly. or something like hey you're about to do dlc we at bioware recommend you do this dlc here other well, otherwise i have to look up fucking youtube videos because i never played mm -hmm. the dlc um in any of the trilogy um no so yeah but uh, yeah, um, but anyway, um, I'm really overall enjoying my time in Mass Effect One. I mean, despite you know my gripes, I still think this is a fantastic game um, that has held up surprisingly well, despite the fact that it's like a 15 year old game. So I think that's really impressive. Um, and yeah, I, I I'm generally really positive on it. It's, it's been really great to just get lost in that world. I'm really excited to do a bunch of um, a bunch of missions um, and then go to Novaria before before stopping. Um, like I said, I'm at like 16 ish hours. So I've really been putting a, t a ton of time into side missions um, and uh, talking to crewmates and stuff like that and getting their personal side quests as well. So very excited to keep playing that. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Mass Effect 1. Awesome. Um, All righty. Then I've also been... I just finished It Takes Two, which... Um, so my partner and I started playing that about a month ago. Um, and she doesn't usually play video games, so I was surprised when she wanted to play it. Um, but we both really loved it. Um, she joked that it was in, like, her top two of the year. And I kind of squinted at her because I'm like, you don't play a lot of video. That doesn't mean anything. Um, but she really enjoyed it, and I was glad. Uh, I didn't expect her to want to play it because she's not super into platforming. But um, we uh, we both really enjoyed our time with it. I, I'd say this is an easy, like, four, four and a half out of five or something like that, nine out of ten kind of situation for me. It's really good. Uh, I do have a problem with like some of the storyline stuff feels a little a little over overbearing maybe um, and I I'm not sure exactly what I should take away from that ending I I do like its amb ambiguity um, and I do wait, like that wait, they wait. don't what's that I was gonna say when you say overbearing do you mean like it it's too preachy it's too like uh, I just think it's of... a bit much I guess I'm thinking in particular of a certain storyline or or subplot within it that the parents are trying to make Rose cry. And I, I just, I feel like, I mean, there's definitely some good, I, I get that it's done for a dark sense of humor. Um, and, and I understand they're kind of in a desperate situation. Um, but it just, it feels a little unnecessary. I don't know. Um, especially because there's just parts in it that as an adult are kind of traumatizing. I can't even imagine a kid playing this with their parent or something yeah. like that. Or I mean, yeah, it's, I know what you're talking about and it is, uh, is brutal yeah. but I, I I feel like it's necessary to sort of because the, the game like tries to paint this picture that um the these two characters are selfish and yeah, they're not sure. uh, they're not thinking about their kid and yeah. I think no, I the that. way that they do that like uh, as dark as it is it really well illustrates that point yeah I agree I agree with that yeah I, I think it's well done I just I don't know. I, I'm trying to like think of my problems with the game, and honestly, I, I come up with very few. I think this game has unimaginable variation in it to such a level that I, I didn't even know video games could still do, but this just feels like video games, the greatest hits. Like, just playing every single type of video game imaginable in one video game, and then just doing it really extremely well. Like, I've said before... There's a part where you uh, are using fidget spinners to go in the air, and I literally think it's one of the best video game mechanic I've ever seen in the game. 
Um, yeah. It's just that good. And yeah, you I mean, only get to play it for like a couple minutes. I wish you had it for longer. But there, so much of this game works when it just feels like this game is doing too much and has too much on its plate, but yet somehow it just nails pretty much all of it. Yeah, I mean, it's not mm-hmm. how um, this game is not made by a AAA studio. Um, but I am curious, um, now that you've finished the game, where uh, is it still as high on your, let's say, game of the year list as it was before? Definitely in my top 10. It was always in my top 10, uh, even even after I was like halfway through with it. Um it's probably in my top five, honestly. Um, I am. I did not expect to love this game as much as I did um, and do. Um, it really took me by surprise. I was not hyped for this game, and I've talked about this before. But I was not. I was not like, you know, I wasn't a big Haze Light fan. I only know Joseph Ferros or whatever his name Ferris. is. I think that's his name, uh, Ferris, because of his whole yeah. "fuck the Oscars" thing. That's the only reason I even knew he existed. Um, not a and, bad thing to be yeah. famous for. <laughs> To be yeah, I mean, I I agree, I agree, no. but 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 I still I didn't know I didn't know him for Hazelight. I didn't know their games. I never played Two Brothers or anything like that. Um, so it it caught me by surprise how polished this game is. Like I, that's really what I describe it. I I totally agree. This is a really big uh, double A game, um, and it's it's just incredible. And I, and what I'm really excited for is for the co-op speed runs uh, that are going to happen in GDQ when people get together and race each other uh, in co-ops. I'm super stoked for that because that's going to be amazing. I can't uh, wait for... Already um, got in... What's that? Sorry, I can't wait for Marvel to get the uh, the solo speed yes. run. I'm very excited for that. Marvel will get it any day now. Um, but yeah, people have already gotten it down to, I think, five hours, four hours. Um, but yeah, if you know what you're doing, uh, the movement in this game is incredible. Um, I just think this is an incredibly well done polished game that I did not expect to love as much as I did, but um, definitely a, a big sleeper hit for this um, for this year for me uh, in terms of it takes two. Um, so yeah, I don't again, I'm still kind of processing the the ending. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it, but I like it. Like I don't think it was bad. It's not the ending I expected, but you know maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, but yeah, it takes two, very good. Uh, play it with a play it with someone and and hope they don't hate you uh, afterwards because it really does take two in that game. All right. Uh, any quick final thoughts you want to say before we, you move, we move on, Dory? Yes. Um, I did just beat Resident Evil Eight. I stuck up. I stayed up till like three a.m. Uh, Seb was with me the whole time, which is great. I'm sure he loved me just like yelling through my microphone, like right in his ear whenever I got ah. scared. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, so thank you, Seb. For being there uh but i finished uh, re8 and we are going to do a spoiler cast on that soon so we will talk about that then yeah absolutely absolutely awesome all right uh well james what have you been playing this week i have been playing uh death stranding now i'll keep this brief Uh because if i don't i will probably talk about this game for uh half an hour but um i've been playing it for um the spelunkers podcast um we just recorded the first part of that so basically it's a deep dive it's a sort of game club um deep dive into the game in the first half of the game um where we sort of break down the chapters and get really specific and talk about uh the game pretty much um i mean you know how it works it's like a book club for games um so check that out that's going to drop soon um but yeah the uh the gameplay in, in Death Stranding is still is still one of those things where it's really sort of unique and mm. it's I can I can still see why it was so divisive at launch. Because I mean you are just walking around. But I think what's yeah. really interesting about it is how they gamify that and how it is like Death Stranding is more of a video game than you think it is going into mm. it. I, I think, like, just just quickly as well, I think Death Stranding is probably the perfect candidate for a PS4 game to be translated over to PS5. Like, if only just for, like, the haptic and, like, the trigger effects on, you know, like, sort of tilting left and right with the R2, L2 and R2 triggers, yeah. like, I think it'd be the perfect game. There's the already, um, yeah, there's already a PS5 patch for it. Um, I, I, I don't know if that does anything with the haptics. Or the, the did you sense. 
Are you playing it on PC? Or I'm playing PS5? on PS4. Ah, um, I see. I yeah. see. Yeah. So I don't okay. know about that, but I do know that the PS5 patch has 60 FPS and faster loading times. I should probably check that out then. I had no idea that was a patch. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I think that was one uh, of the well, first ones. Um, oh, but also, uh, one thing. Here, this is a a sneak uh, pre- a sneak preview at the Splunkers podcast. Um, the, one of the things that we bring up that um, that I bring up and that we sort of discover together is that uh, in the first scene of the game where you enter a cave, uh, where Norman mm. Reedus enters a cave, there's a deer hiding in the back of that cave in the dark, um, and just I know it's, it's you know you could miss it easily. But just um, before that as well, there's a bunch of birds that fly overhead, which you probably remember. Um, now, it's no secret that Low Roar features a lot in this game. What? Um, one of the Low Roar album covers has a deer and birds on it. Oh. So I think that's a, I think the deer and the birds, which are the only animals in the game... I think um, are, are or at least in this section of the game, uh, that's got to yeah. be a reference to that low roar album cover, right? I didn't even see or notice a deer in the background. Yeah, it's only that, in like, there for like, like it's... one camera angle, and then it disappears. Ah, okay. So like, is it like an actual live deer, or is it just like a mural or painting of it? No, deer it's an actual live the deer. It pokes its head out of the oh. darkness, and then you don't see it again. Jesus. Okay. I had no idea about that. I'll have to revisit it then. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, any final thoughts before we move on? Nope. Uh, that's me. It's yep. a fun game. Fun game indeed. Um. Well, just quickly before we move on to the impressions, um, haven't really been playing much new this week personally. Um. Although I will just quickly shout out Dead by Daylight as it's probably one of the few multiplayer experiences that i think uh i'm not gonna say like perfectly crafted but like the ideas behind it and just like the gameplay it sounds super simple but i love it regardless and the fact that like we can have a video game that has saw um silent hill uh i don't think it has friday the 13th yet um nightmare on elm street scream probably a bunch of other movie horror movie franchises and now resident evil the fact that it can have all of that in one game and it feels completely seamless and like you know makes sense is probably the strangest yet probably most awesome thing to ever come yeah. out of the video game I, I mean i haven't played a lot of that game but you know i'm impressed it's... by that yeah yeah absolutely i mean if not just for the fact that the dev team had the budget to you know, go for such prolific, you know, horror IPs and stuff, then definitely, you know, for the fact that it, it, like, this has been going, like, for, what, five years, I think, now? And they're, I mean, they've probably burned through all of the big horror IPs, I think. I can't really think of any other ones that would... One might say it's one of the best crossovers in... Crossovers, biggest, yeah. Biggest crossovers in video game history. Yeah. Now they I just was... need to bring in Dracula and the Wolfman and Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, that's that's their next um, IP they could for. No, um, the other game I've been playing, I literally just played a couple hours of this last night, right after the Horizon Forbidden West stream. But I've been playing a little bit more of Horizon Zero Dawn, and this game needs and a sixty FPS update right Does it not now have one? because no, they don't. They they have a they have a performance mode on the like I'm playing on PS5. They have a performance mode, but I, the frame rate feels even worse than than it does in the um what you call it in graphics in the mode. Graphics mode, yeah, because like at least in the graphics mode, they have like a stable 30 FPS or whatever, whereas in the performance mode. It's it's kind of in that awkward position between thirty and sixty FPS. But so it, it doesn't it even. Like... It, so it doesn't even reach sixty. No, no, it it is far from sixty FPS in the wow. performance mode. 
It sounds Sorry. like to me that you intended to 60 FPS and now you can't go back and now you judge every game that's below 60 bad now. Like once you get to that level, you can't go it's, back. That's it. I mean, you're, I'm, I'm, you're a PC I was, gamer. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I actually prefer the more stable 30 FPS of this game over the performance mode or whatever the hell they have because, because like the, the problem with the performance mode is that I don't think it's at a hard cap. So it constantly teeters like the 30 FPS and then up to like I'm assuming like 40 to 45. So it's this is very this is uneven. Like another, this is like just another step in Mitch's progression to being a true gamer. Like first he was talking uh, about Doom I... and now he's talking about like 60 FPS or well, it's nothing. I, mean, I will say Seb took over my role for the uh, professional bragger of the podcast last week. So I, I thank That's you for true. that, Seb. Uh, <laughs> Excellent stand. Somebody, uh, had, somebody had to yeah. carry the torch, you know, Mitch. You weren't here. I, I very much appreciate that. I don't even um, care, it's my torch. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're just playing yeah, for I, Yeah, no, true. But, no, I, but yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. It sounds, as as, it sounds like yeah, you want to be a PC gamer, honestly. I, I, if if I, I had frame some, rate now, so. Yeah, I was going to say, if I had the budget and the, you know, room space to have a actual decent up-to-date pc than i would but also mm -hmm. i think it's just a lot easier to manage an actual you know gamepad controller than mouse and keyboard they you know i, I don't want to deal with you know fatigued hands and stuff 60 should be the standard I, in the industry I now so. uh, i was i, I was gonna it seems to be becoming the standard at least like with the sony titles for now uh, and a lot of it uh, needs a lot to be. of i was gonna say yeah it because the funny thing is, like, I mean, Xbox is supposedly going up all the way to 120 FPS, but, like, you know, it's... Yeah. A lot of it's just PR talk, because, like, not even just, like, not just a, you know, dunk on Xbox here, but a lot of it is PR talk. Yeah, it is. Because most mm -hmm. people can't even reach that on their, on their screens and That's displays. True. Yep. 100%. Uh, yeah, but, you know, like, if, if you can reach those speeds, and terrific, no. but I think... Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what were you going to say, Seb? Oh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, uh, there is a lot of, there are several games that go to 120 frames with the Xbox Series X because X yeah. Xbox put more of an emphasis on backwards compatibility. PlayStation doesn't really care about that as much. And, uh, and you're right that uh, most people don't have a TV that can go to up to 120 hertz. So, yeah. So even if you, exactly. if you have a kind of game like that, you're not going to get 100, you're not going to get 120 frames. No, so. no, you won't. You yeah. won't. Which really sucks, but um, mm -hmm. I, I I'd say a couple more things on Horizon Zero Dawn quickly as well. I'm I'm not sure if this is a hot take or not, but this game has I don't feel like the RPG mechanics in this game really need to be there, just because that it feels like there's a lot of very useless inventory management that both doesn't really fit with the you know the pace of the game. But also kind of just like, you know, like I'd say out of, you know, at least because I'm, I'm doing a brand new hard playthrough at the moment, about out of 20 minutes of game time, probably like five to 10 was spent either in the inventory menu, just, you know, managing resources and stuff I had or backtracking my way all the way to the merchant so I could sell more resources to get, you know, to make room for such and such resources like it. I understand, like, you know, the hunting aspect of it, and, like, it wants you to sort of, like, immerse into that aspect of the world, but I, and we'll talk about more about this later, but I really hope that Forbidden West streamlines the hell out of those RPG mechanics. Yeah. Just I mean, so, yeah. Do you know what, what it is? What it's, is? Um, it's, it's that thing where rpg light mechanics are now sort of interwoven into... Mm the open world genre and yeah. horizon zero dawn is an open world ass open world game yeah it is it is very big i must say it is far too big yeah i mean no, not just in terms go... of like this the size but more like um yeah it's just the activities and stuff it's like is that ghost of tsushima thing where it's mm. uh, it is a good game mm. but it's a pretty generic open world game yeah, no, no, I'd say that's a fairly apt statement. Honestly, I would, I... I would go as far as to say that Horizon Zero Dawn is large. It is incredibly large. Mm. Mm. 
I didn't really system. have I didn't really have an issue with the map in Horizon. I I thought I had a pretty good time 100%ing the game, getting the platinum. Like it was very manageable. It was only like 25 30 yeah. hours. I didn't think it I, I love I love yeah. uh, right. I haven't played it since 2017, so it's been like four years. So maybe mm -hmm. I'd feel differently about it now. But I remember loving that at the time. It was one of the first PS one of the first PS4 games I ever played, uh, and I just remember being like really stunned by its visuals, and I loved its story and characters. Um, definitely could use a little bit of work on the uh, on the action, um, but I think that I think with Forbidden West they're going to do that. Yeah, I, I I think another thing, and I mean because i'm not sure if it's because a lot of the cast wasn't natively english speaking i have nothing to back that up but i i didn't think i wasn't a huge fan of the acting either personally just because i feel like a lot of the characters delivered their lines rather needlessly verbose and without much emotion behind it i think that and, was i've heard that criticism a yeah. couple times i think where the npcs don't have the best yeah. line delivery NPCs especially, and I think, I mean, there's there's times, and I mean, she, it, she did seem a lot better in the Forbidden West trailer as well, but there's times where, I mean, I'll just say it now, it's probably a hot take, but I don't think Ashley Birch can act more like serious characters as well as she can, you know, like the more over-the-top comedic ones. Um, I'd I say that's like, I definitely, I, yeah, like, I, I definitely want to, like, I hope that she, her performance in Forbidden West improves, and I think part two, she, you know, she did pretty well on that as well. So, I... Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of Ashley Birch's performance in this game, which I feel is, like, a cardinal sin in some circles, yeah, but... that's bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing um, up against this right now, Mitch. I'm not, yeah. I'm not letting this lie down. Uh, okay. I don't see you standing. I don't, I don't remember still having sitting a problem... Down. With her act, I don't. I don't have a problem with Ashley's performance either. I thought it was great. But, yeah. thing, the only problem I remember sure having was... is, is the faces. I thought the. I thought the. Yeah. I thought, the, I thought face, the, the yeah. facial animations mm. look weird. Yeah. yeah, they, they oh, yeah the facial. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think like Mass Effect. The, the graphics looks like in the lighting, especially, they look outstanding and beautiful for a 2017 game. But yeah, the like the animations and like. The facial animation is just some of the like other animations in cutscenes are pretty awkward. Um, but I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's even just down to like Ashley's like acting or if it's the writing or direction or whatever, but like something don't know what happened there. Something about um Aloy in this game felt off to me. I'm not sure what though. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm replaying it at the moment, so hopefully, I'll actually get to the heart of it when I do, but yeah, I'm. Either way, overall, I'm still very much enjoying my time with Horizon Zero Dawn again, um, and I hope that I'll have it finished by the time Forbidden West comes out, but we'll talk more about that later. Alrighty. Um, Seb, have you been playing anything this week, or...? Uh, I've, been, I've been playing a couple games, but, but uh, I don't really have much to say about oh. them. I mean, I've been playing no. Mass Effect, uh, just kind of a repeat <laughs> of what I said before. Basically, yeah. basically what Dory... I have pretty much the same opinion as Dory on Mass Effect. Uh, although I don't mind the vehicle driving, I don't mind the driving the the truck thing, Mako. bus where they go Mako, yeah. that much. It's whatever. Uh, the combat's not that great, but hmm. uh, the story is amazing. Uh, and then I'm playing Bayonetta too. Uh, amazing game. Uh, just like the first game, way over the top. Uh, just as way over the top as as, as any other platinum game is, and. Uh, but it's incredible. Uh, it looks amazing. I got a new Switch Lite and something, and the screen's smaller, so it it it, it really pops the the way it looks and stuff. So I'm excited to get yep. the Switch Pro. I would love to see this game in uh, 4K. Mm. But yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say I wonder how Nintendo are gonna pull off that amount of hardware with you know the small in like actual physical hardware of the co console itself, but. I guess we'll see. I, I would imagine. I don't know. Maybe maybe some with the dock. Maybe that ties probably, into something. Probably technology would be the dock. Technology's advanced in the last four years since the Switch came out. But do we have like? Do we think it's advanced to the point where like just native 4K on a little? I don't know. I think it's gonna be. I think yeah, it's. Be, I think it's gonna be checkerboard 4K. Yeah. Like PS4 ish. Yeah, probably. That sounds about right. Yeah. 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 And it can't be five hundred dollars. Right. 
uh, is it, you can't be the same no, price as it? PS5. Well, it's going to be a replacement for the current Switch, so it'll probably be around the same price. I don't think it's a replacement. No, I, I, I heard I'd, that. I'd, I'd say they, they, you know, business wise, they'd want to charge like maybe like fifty, a hundred dollars extra than yeah, what the Switch like is already going for. Yeah, it'll probably be four hundred. Like, yeah, because the the Switch is like what three hundred. Well, two fifty in America, right? Like it's three hundred base price. Well, the switch, yeah. The, sw the switch lights two hundred, and the regular switch is three hundred. So I, yeah. Nintendo likes to do different models for things. Mm. They had they had I mean, five thousand DSs and three DSs. <laughs> I was so. about to say, yeah, they had friggin' yeah, they had too many DSs. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah all right. So. Well. Uh. Any final thoughts before we move on, Seb? No. 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 Perfect. All right. Well. Uh, I, well, I guess we'll move on to our impressions this week, which uh, this week we have lined up with the game we have lined up is Knockout City. Um, Dory, Seb, <laughs> me, we, we've all played a bit of the game. Um, James, have you played much of this game at all? I haven't played any of this game at all. You haven't played any been, of this game? I've been busy, man. I've been real busy. This, and this is such a you, this is such a you game. Channel. I, w I <laughs> yeah. will play it. I, I, you I guys have you been... You guys have been raving about this game, so I will uh, give it a try at some point. All right. I, I, I mean, you've probably, like but... uh, you probably got like one or two days left before the trial ends, so you might want to yeah. hurry up. As soon I'll just, it is I'll on just game buy it. When, I'll just get it when it comes out. It's on Game it Pass. Yeah. Free. Oh, it's out? Yeah, it's on, it's on Game Pass, and also it's like 20 bucks normally and 18 bucks with EA. I'll just play it on Game Pass. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's free on yeah, Game okay. Pass. Yeah, okay. Easy peasy. Yeah. So, I'll, I mean, I, I guess I'll get straight into one of my criticisms for it. Is that price? <laughs> I'll, I'll bucks, just go straight yeah. into the criticism. Twenty bucks is too much for this game. I agree. Like, if if this trial is like representative of what the final product is, this game is like ten bucks, not not twenty. Like, I think I, it should be free to play. Honestly, it sh it should be like I, I mentioned yeah. it while we were playing, but they should have business wise. Hell, even just so sort of have it as if you download it or purchase it during this first week it's completely free like you get to keep it forever but if you miss that window and want to play it after then you then you do have to pay you know the price for the game but like this like this the game isn't good enough and content rich enough and varied enough for me to go hey i played you know a bunch of matches in this free trial i'm going to you know spend yeah. 20 dollars and get the full version like that's not what yeah. i've gotten from this game i yeah yeah so i'm on the opposite spectrum of that uh i have put five six hours into this game uh i want to remind everyone when the trailer came out for this game i'm gonna call myself out i said the trailer looked awful and this game is gonna suck so i just it... I'm, I'm i don't need to call myself out here but i'm going to i was completely wrong this is a very from for my expectations I ver my expectations were were they're off the screen they're down way down, um and I thought mm. I think this game is great uh I, I I I do agree with Mitch that it should be free to play this looks like a Fortnite ass Fortnite knockoff uh and it, uh it, it should looks probably close be a... to the well I was gonna say it looks closer to the Rocket Arena which is also an EA original that is... which right that was gonna be my <laughs> yeah that was gonna be my question actually because uh, Mitch you've played Rocket Arena right yeah yeah. Are there any and similarities to that by uh, beyond there's... surface level? I it's mean, mostly besides... surface level, I would say. It's I I think, I mean, like the gameplay itself is mostly different, but both of them are st like they both have a very similar camera angle, very similar art style. Like you know, even though one of them, like even though the one of them has like rockets and the other one's dodgeball they're both very similar in like the traversal feels pretty much exactly the same there's a little there's a lot more nuance to it in knockout arena but they're like they're both very much still about tr like jumping around and like you know nailing like double jumps and tricks and stuff whilst hopping around this like very tight packed arena that has some verticality to it um i want to say though like the big the biggest it's not really a concrete thing either but like the biggest similarity knockout arena has to rocket arena knockout city. <laughs> knockout city has to rocket arena there we go um is just like i mean again it goes back to the fact that this feels like it should be 
a free to play or at least something that's available on PS Plus. Yeah. For free. But, I, yeah. but like, at least, but at least the buzz uh, for this game is a lot better than Rocket Arena. Like, I don't think I don't, I don't, I'm not in touch yeah. with every gamer on the planet, but I didn't see anything about that game. I I don't. Like Twitter nah. has been on my on my timeline on Twitter though, people are really buzzing about Knockout City. They're really enjoying it. Well, I'll tell yeah. you, you clearly didn't listen I think to it's your from the... Game of the Year podcast for 2020 <laughs> because it yes, was on James my was... list. Yeah, well, to, to be fair, James, Battletoads was also on my list, so you know that that's that's what you get. Yeah, but that's you know, yeah, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's your the, that's the, your the, list. The... We expect you to have bad games on your list. <laughs> All right, look. So I I want to back up a little Toads? bit. No, I, I want to I back up a little bit. Um, so I think it's important, uh, just in case people don't know what the hell we're talking about. Um, yes. So yes, Knockout, Knockout City is a dodgeball game. Uh, a trailer was shown for it a while back, I think in a uh, Nintendo Direct. Or no, it was, was a, yeah, well, Sony there, play. there was a trailer for it. was in a State it, of Play, I think. State of Play, I, yeah. I think it was wasn't in both. It, yeah. It was in it was both. both. It wasn't it was revealed? Yeah, it was. I think it was revealed in the EA event, though, wasn't it? Maybe. Who fucking knows? Um, but either way, event? either way, it's a it's a it's a dodgeball game that you can play with your friends. Um, you have hideouts, you have crews. It's got this cool like retro aesthetic. Um, I think the tracks are really good. Um, and I think the the uh, announcer uh, has got a whoever does the VA for him. I think he does a great job. Um, I I think the opposite. I I think the announcer's voice is very grating and annoying. But anyways, continue. <laughs> okay, sure, fine. Um, I've never it, been. My I've never been. It's... Uh, I'm sorry. I've, I've never heard people be so divisive over why they like a game before. Yeah, and the, the character models I... look like Xbox avatars. They do. They do. And yeah, I mean the the, the character the, the, the character models are not like super good, but like to quote Seb, like gameplay is king, and I feel like uh, the yeah, gameplay true. here is just terrific. Like that's yeah, that's the part that really needed to work here. I don't care that the avatars look like they're from you know. I agree. Xbox avatars definitely. Yeah. Um, but so what you basically have to do, you know, it's like your typical like team battle game, uh, and you've, it depends on the kind of match you're doing, but the most general one is to go into team battles and get, uh, whoever gets a 10. And basically you can take two hits from a dodgeball unless you're using a friend as a dodgeball, because you can actually roll in a ball yourself and you can throw your teammates or yourself, or, or you can get thrown by your teammates, um, at other people. And that's an instant KO. Um, there's whole sorts of like variations. Like you can jump in the air and there are two different, like there's like a, um, like a curve throw and then there's like a, a, a dunk throw or whatever it's, whatever it's called. I can't remember. Um, but there's all these different trick shots. Um, you can dodge, you can catch, you can dodge a wrench, etc., etc. You can dodge a ball. Um, so, um, yeah, it's got a lot of like, like it, it's very simple gameplay, but it's got enough intricacies, at least to me to make it interesting like i still have to work on my catching i still have to work on my trick shots like those are the two big things i think about a lot when i'm trying to play uh and i don't it doesn't always work out for me um it's really cool like you can um when you have your teammate in your hand as a ball you can either throw them normally or you can hold it down longer and they become a bomb and you can like arch them and then the teammate actually controls the way that they that they go and so you can get like a double ko or triple ko or whatever from that if you if you aim it well um yeah i mean i think i think the gameplay in this is terrific it's it's certainly been good enough to have me hooked for like five or six hours like i'm definitely the mm. hottest on this i've also played the most of it so i'm really the one who pushed for like impressions of this because like i really want to talk about this game mostly also just to admit my faults like i was wrong about this game this game is actually pretty kick-ass i love yeah. dodgeball in real life so that helps um yeah. it's one of the few sports i'm actually good at because i'm a total coward but anyway um <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm great I, at dodging I, i'm just not great at throwing or catching but don't tell anybody no I, um, I was the i was the person that always stay in the back and try to catch the balls because i'm very good at, i'm very good at catching but i can't i just i couldn't throw those balls very well so i let the there's always those those dudes that want to take over the game and let them throw the ball so i catch it and pass it to them but yeah hmm but uh, I but go ahead, Vince. Go ahead. I was gonna say I I'm probably the least hot on the game just because when I tried to play and when I continued trying to play, I faced consistent lag issues, which you know is more the fault of my internet than the game. So I'm not like gonna hold it against the game or anything. But 
like I mean like we we played a decent like three or four matches together like Dory with Dorian and Seb yeah. and like I think by like the the final match I was it was literally unplayable for me because like it it was the lag that like that really annoying lag where it's like you'd walk five meters ahead then the game would teleport you back to five meters like back to where you were then yeah. you try and like go forwards again and teleport you back and then you know like at at certain points like if you like jumped over a like a cavernous you know like a essentially like a pitfall or something mm -hmm. you'd jump over it you'd land safely then it'd teleport you back and it just send you straight down and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it because fuck yeah. you <laughs> um it like the the lag was annoying but even despite the lag even you know there were a few moments where you know i could actually play it was really fun still like even even when it was super laggy i had a ton of fun and that's probably the best compliment I can say to this game, because very few games yeah. are still fun, even when you're facing terrible, terrible, terrible lag. Yeah, it's just... I think this game is very good, uh, my, but my opinion is the same as when I first saw it, that uh, it's a fun game that's going to like be fun for like three to five rounds, and then I'm going to be done with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not exactly. something I can, it... uh, It's not something I can play for five hours, personally. Like, it... Yeah. I, I can imagine, you know esport pros like dory yeah. really gravitating <laughs> towards the game um yeah. like I, I i can imagine it being really you know really good for like the esport crowd but for casual gamers like like it seems like a very niche thing that yeah. a lot of i general i have found my niche then often. everybody because this is apparently yep. my niche is esports dodgeball um i <laughs> i flip and love this game like i i think it's really great it might even be because we're in such a slow year this and Hood Outlaws might actually be in my top ten. I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a wild year. What can I say? Jeez. Oh, whoa, whoa, Dory, whoa, Dory, let's slow down there. there. Yeah. <laughs> let's be rational here. <laughs> yeah, I, I said maybe. Okay, I don't know. The yeah, stuff could yeah. still come out. It's just like there's only so many games I'm gonna play this year, and it's a really slow uh, year full of delays. Okay. One one thing I'll ask you then, Dory, is yeah. Do you think you'll buy this game at the at its current full asking price? I have Game Pass, so I mean, like, once I'm done on PS5, oh. I'll just move over to Game Pass. But it like, has cross play, if, like cross save, right? Yeah. I was yeah, gonna I say, so, yeah. ig ignoring Game Pass though, like, would you spend the full asking price on this game? It would depend on how consistently I could get games from other people. Because the thing that I love about this game and it's not going to be like super surprising is i love playing with friends like it's fun to play with a team of three and play with strangers like so i i was yeah. on the min max uh or I, I was part of the min max crew uh and we all played um for new show plus or whatever um like yeah like this week and i got to like yeet ben hansen off a off a roof uh <laughs> a, while he was like in a cage ball or something and that was that was the highlight of my life i'm probably Put that on my resume somewhere. He's, but, um, he's but now that banned was... you from the Discord. Just, just <laughs> That's right. In. He's banned you from the Discord. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, so um, I think it really depends on my friends. Like, I love this game because I love playing with friends. Like, the dopamine rush I get from getting somebody out is, like, really great. And I don't, I don't get that from a lot of games. And I don't get super competitive in gaming in general. Like, I can get... I get competitive when I'm by myself. I don't get competitive with other people generally. Like I'll I'll talk smack or whatever, but I'm like I'm almost always joking or not actually upset or whatever. Like I was playing yeah. I was playing with friend of the show uh, Rob Rob Hud uh, Hudak, and uh, he like he he was like you know good throw good catch like he was like that really annoying opponent who's just a nice guy so like you can't hate him. <laughs> and at one point I'm yeah. like God damn it Rob stop being so pleasant I'm trying to hate you and throw a dodgeball at you damn it. Um so yeah to answer your question it just depends on how consistent I can play with friends. Yeah. I, I considered it, though, and I, I still would consider, even if I didn't have Game Pass, I still would consider buying this game because I'm that hot on it. But I do agree with you, for for sure. Let me full stop here. For sure, it should be free free to play or at most, like, 10 bucks or something. I agree, 20 I, is too much. Yeah, wait, wait, how long do we see this game lasting, like, at least in the general audience's eye, like, in terms of... Because the problem with... The thing with multiplayer exclusive games like this that are very niche in its appeal is that they don't tend to last that long. I will say Ex the best Exhibit thing this a game has Rocket going Arena. for it. I will I will say the best thing this thing this game has going for it is it has utter and complete 
crossplay and cross mm -hmm. saves, and that is probably going to save it for a, a longer than some other games. Okay. But yeah, I don't know how long this is going to play or going to go for. It really depends, like it does for most multiplayer games, in terms of how much the devs support it after launch, how much EA supports the devs in supporting it after launch. Like that's really what's going to decide how many people stick around. This block party was a huge success for them. They boasted like two million players or something, which is huge. Mm. But but uh, whether yeah. that's going to whether that's going to remain stable, that's another question. Yeah, it really mm. depends on the streamers, like how popular their game is. Uh, like Among Us and not and uh, you know Rocket League and all that were all mm. like huge games with streamers and got tons and tons of views and stuff. But I mean, I, I feel like the reason Among Us was so popular as well is just because it was so different. Yeah, like it was it was completely different, but also like while well, still applying, right. you know, be accessible to everyone. Whereas with right. like I mean the fact that we can just like compare you know, um compare games like Rocket Arena and this so easily is is kind of telling of the fact that like even though like, you know, in in a general, you know, sense it's completely different than anything that's come before because I don't think there's been a dodgeball game. But like it still shares a lot of baseline traits with other games, so mm. it make it might make it just that less bit appealing. It's like you know, someone sees like it's completely unlikely, but like someone sees this game and and the traversal in it, and someone might go, "Hey, I'm gonna play Rocket Arena now, or I'm gonna play Sunset Overdrive. Why oh, not?" No. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong; I don't think this game's gonna last, but it is. No. It is dependent on how popular it is on Twitch and streamers. So... And stuff. Would you say uh, that this game's launch is a true underdog story? All right, well, that's it. So that's the end right. of the segment. I don't think we Word can top that. <laughs> I don't think we can top uh, top that reference. That was actually, uh, I'm being uh, genuine here. That was a, a very movie. good, that was, that was a good, well, it's a good movie, but that was a good reference. Like that was very craftily fit in there, James. So thank you. Mm, yeah. Bravo. Well done. Mm, thank you very much. Very good. Well, um, do we have any final thoughts before you want to wrap this segment up then, Proper? <laughs> um, I think it, I genuinely think it's a great game, um, and uh, I'm really excited to play it with people. I will probably put another few hours into it. I've I've fallen off Hood Outlaws lately. I'm only playing it every now and then uh, when people mm. say that they're going to play it, but I'm like actively looking for people to play with uh, KO yeah. City. Like, so I'm I, really enjoying it. I think mm. it's a good game that needs more customization. More, it just needs. It needs something to keep it, people. It needs a progression mm. to keep people going. Like if it, if there's no progression in this game, that's that's viable. It, people are it gonna needs, drop it. Yeah, it, it needs better, you know, progression than just unlocking another horrifying face face structure or, or something. Shirt. You know, it's yeah, the, like it's, flame shirt. Yes. There's like two. It was like three. It was like four options, and like three of them were like women's bodies. There was like yeah. one. Like, like, like there, there was one where you wear like really tight pants and you're like a thick ass. And but did you miss like the skinny jeans like revolution? Yeah, that one. Like so many guys, so many guys were wearing skinny jeans. Or I, no, I, I wear know, skinny I jeans. I do. But... Yeah, but those are like skinny, uh, skinny jeans. Those are like tight as hell. Like I wear skinny jeans, but skinny jeans. But those are like, oof, that's a thick boy. <laughs> Put that right. in the intro. <laughs> that's going on the intro all right that's a thick okay. boy all right well um james do you know what the next segment is um i see you're getting uh, your payback now from when yep. i did this to you the other week yes mm -hmm. i do know what the next segment Absolutely. is Mitch. You do? um yep. yeah uh dory do you know what the next segment is uh i do actually seb do you know what the next segment is i do do you, do you know what the next segment is mitch <laughs> i believe <laughs> That it is a word from our sponsor. It all Just comes like back We're around. passing it back and forth. <laughs> this week's episode is sponsored by Knockout City. What the hell? Really? Okay. <clears throat> this week's episode is sponsored by Knockout. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Sorry. We're doing an ad read. Come on. This week's episode is sponsored by Knockout City and the new hit game by EA where you have to dodge- it, it, it. Fuck! Okay, alright. <clears throat> EA Sports. 
It's in the go. <laughs> oh, are you fucking kidding me? I can't, I can't do, I can't do that. I, nope. I'm done. Screw this. I'm out. No. Fuck. Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you for that sponsor, whoever we decided to bring on. Um, <laughs> now we, uh, have a, a lot of news to go through today. There's, and probably all of it just popped up in the last 24 to 48 hours, so thank you to all of the game publishers and companies for dumping all of this on us at once. Um, but thank I, you to I'd our say Clark for Overlords. E3 Absolutely. season, baby! Let's go! <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. okay. Um, I guess the first piece of news we have, though, is from our good corporate o overlords at PlayStation. Please sponsor us. Um, <laughs> is that we have the PlayStation Plus games for June. So we have Operation Tango, which it, I, I believe it's the PS5 game for this month. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I I haven't heard anything about this, so if someone else can fill me in, then that'd be great. I have no idea what it is. No, neither. I, I, I think it, I'd search... I, yeah. I think I searched up as like a two-player spy game or something. That's like that. what, yeah, that's, what, that's all I know about it. Yeah, that's... I know, people I, are, just, I know people are, like, really digging it. I don't, like, I heard good things, like, in the build-up to it, but I just don't know anything about it. I'm more no, excited about... Know. I'm more excited about the other game that you're gonna say. I was gonna say the next one is Virtua Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown, which yeah, now is it. I was gonna say, is it like a remaster, or a re-release of an no, old is... Virtua Fighter, or is this a brand new one? Is I think it's. I want to say both, but it's a new game. Like it's it's a yeah. brand new game that we're getting for free. Yeah, I was gonna say that people just... are excited for this. Like the fighting community yeah. is really hyped right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw uh, another cool thing I saw on Twitter or Reddit or somewhere was the fact that there's a like there's an option in the settings to change the graphics back to like yeah, there the is. classic pixelized or like really yeah. blocky yeah. models of the original. Which I, I you know I'd say for fans I know nothing about Virtua Fighter, but I know regardless for fans mm -hmm. of the franchise that'd be really cool to see. I, yeah. I know like I know Resident Evil Two Remake had it, but it looked really awkward and weird in that yeah. game it's it, it's sega's it's sega's like like horse in the race against street fighter and tekken and it kind of yeah. always got overshadowed by that and mortal kombat and things like that like virtual fighter is like yeah. classic 90s fighting game i don't know if it's still big now I, I guess it is the reaction's been pretty positive for this so yeah yeah i'd say so um and i mean i'd say the the big one which is probably the most surprising is star wars squadrons as mm. the as another game for ps plus i, I mean, am I so glad i didn't buy this there's several times i considered buying this <laughs> yeah. I, but, uh, I so i got it i got it for christmas for my mom so i technically never ooh, bought it and it's just been on my shelf and i was gonna play it at some point in 2020 and i just never got around to it so mm. yay it, it's very now good I can download it. it's very good i beat it i got it for christmas uh, i played it in mm. vr it's, it's incredible in vr uh I really enjoyed it. Uh, I mm. it's not surprised that it's on plus because this game has been dropping in price like crazy. Like even when I got it Christmas time, it was like 20, yeah, it was twenty bucks. It was, yeah, it was like thirty twenty bucks for my mom, so that makes sense. But I think you get it for free or EA Play. I could be wrong, but I, I think it's part of that. I mean, price. maybe, but I, I mean, I I say surprising in the sense that this game is barely six seven months old. Yeah, November. and like it, it was a it was a fairly like big release. Like I I, I don't want to say triple A, but it was definitely like one of the like higher range double A at the very least. Yeah, it's like type of games. I would say it's triple A because it did have quite a budget. Like not a budget, maybe yeah. it had quality. It had triple A quality. It was very yeah, like it it had that polish and I mean sheen. To it was it. made yeah. by it was made by EA Motive, right? Pretty sure that sounds about right. Yeah, and that's uh not a small studio. Mm, that is a triple a studio yeah yeah we'll, we'll, all right we'll, we'll go with we'll, it's a AAA budget like it looks like a high quality game right? so i would yeah. say it's AAA. Yeah. we'll we'll run with the narrative that it is a triple a game and that we're super surprised yet also thankful <laughs> that it is available for all on ps plus yeah uh yeah, yeah. thank you jim sony oh what was what was great about that game is there was no like microtransactions or no ea ea greediness they were very pro consumer the whole time so they really did a great yeah, job with that game which is surprising i heard a lot of people 
crying for well, not crying but like outcrying I, I should say for dlc of this game which yeah is, which is you know probably the first time people have asked ea for more content out yeah. of all people <laughs> and yeah you one... don't understand we want more this time not yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i guess you could i guess you could do like scenes from the movie and have like a death star kind of like thing with it i, I mean oh, that'd be cool that'd be pretty yeah. cool yeah that'd be pretty cool but i i, I, I mean so. I, i've i've said it once and i'll say it again i'm not that into the squadron aspect of star wars especially in games oh i'm, I'm not really into like flying jets or space mm. planes whatever the hell so they're called in what you're star saying wars. is you're not into star wars squadrons no no i'll okay. I Mitch, might Mitch wants this out, to be but... called Star Wars Rons, but like not without the squad. Like he doesn't like the squad yeah. aspect. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm, Just a I'm whole a... bunch of people named Ron who really like Star Wars. That's that's what he wants. Hey, Dory, I'll, I'll you... go with. Go I'll ahead. run with all the Rons. I've got Ron Burgundy, um, Ron Swanson, Ron Futures, uh, uh, f- Ron, Ron Perlman, Ron Perlman, Ron Perlman. Uh, that's great. Yeah, Ron. Ron uh, uh, f- what the hell's his name? With with a. Uh, Freaking G four, I can't. Ron comedian. Weasley. Oh, oh, Ron. Uh, I don't no, know. don't pick Ron Weasley. Come on, get somebody else. Yeah, no, I'll pick Ron Weasley. And what I are you talking him. about? What are we having? <laughs> we're picking uh, all uh, four of the Rons that like Star we're Wars. We're picking all the Rons. <laughs> we're we're the picking. Rons. We're picking all all the Rons in the all the Ron places. <laughs> oh my god, Ronald McDonald. No, that'd be terrifying. So, <laughs> just imagine just, like no, shooting a ship no. down and seeing Ronald McDonald's dying face, like look at you, <laughs> offering you like a happy meal while he's dying, blood everywhere. Okay, Ronald he McDonald in a Tie Fighter, just gunning people down. <laughs> it's just like that um that Batman gif where he's in the Batwing or whatever, and he just like gives a thumbs up or whatever. Yeah, just Ronald right. McDonald in a Tie Fighter, just yeah. incredible. <laughs> This this segment but, really derailed very fast. Um, yeah. no, I, any final I, I, thoughts? Uh, yeah. no, I was gonna say I really like the ship combat in Star Wars, like you know Rogue Squadron two and Shadow of the Empire and things like that. Like, like yeah. you know, a Battlefront two, like the original Battlefront two was like the ship combat was incredible in that game. So that's I, I w- enjoy that. That's why I always I wish they'd do. Uh, that was that's like my one wish for a modern Star Wars multiplayer game is more that sort of combat where you can infiltrate ships and stuff and like take them out from the inside and yeah like... they had that they had that well obviously but they had that in a um freaking the original one the original battlefront 2 yeah um where you could go in destroy core i remember playing that game so much it was so good but yeah b- before we move on i just want to say i think ea has done a great job with star wars in the last year or so i after Jedi Fallen Order and Squadron, and uh, they fixed Battlefront Two, and people are really loving it now. They yeah. really fixed Battlefront Two. Like they, it they really fixed. Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard, I've watched some like uh, post impressions or whatever. For, and Dice and EA have definitely turned that game around a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah even heard murmurings of EA now maybe being an okay company or at least a lot better than they used to be. I don't know if we want to go that far. But yeah. at least some people are starting to say that EA might be good again, maybe. Honest, honestly, outside like the sports games where they're very lazy with, they've yeah, yeah. They, I haven't had any problems with them in like quite a while. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's I, like I, I think. Uh, yeah. do, do you know what I think it is? I think um, the worse Activision gets, the better EA looks. And Bl- yeah, hmm. Activision. That's true. probably true. Yeah, the company that ruined Blizzard yeah. is definitely worse than EA. But uh. Yeah. But it, also, I think I think I, you you give a big thanks to Respawn. I think Respawn is carrying that whole company on their back. Them that and the oh, EA yeah. originals, EA originals and and the uh, and Respawn. I mean, I I'd say I, I didn't mention it during Knockout City, but I feel like the the biggest problem with a lot of the EA originals outside of like your Joseph Farris Joseph Farris Farris games, Farris yeah, is the fact that they just don't put a lot of like the the marketing and I guess yeah, that's how they release a lot of their games, like like their multiplayer games, especially yeah. the yeah, original signs. They don't advertise them well enough, and they put them. They they have an asking price that's probably too much for what it really should be. Yeah, like I but I really enjoyed Unravel and one and two, and I really enjoyed no, Faye and and all those games. I, so. Yeah, I mean I I mean I'm all, I'm also just mean Knockout City and Rocket Arena at this oh, yeah, stage. Yeah, like games, I feel like yeah, yeah. they're both games that crash and 
well, I mean, not it's still to be told about Knockout City, but they're both games that yeah. foreseeably will crash and burn due this to is, the fact that... This is that... like seeing a patient who's like, who could possibly pull through, and Mitch is like, you're gonna die, you're gonna <laughs> die, you're gonna yeah. die. It's and he's just like you. watching over the bed being like, you're fucked, man, you're fucked, you're dead, <laughs> dead. But I'll still never get over what they did to Command and Conquer, so EA stole my shit list. So Oh that's, that's that was that was too funny of a the best presentation. The best CNT was... since Coheed and Cambria. And Wait, you guys just... want you guys want to see live demos on stage. Yeah. I, I, I I said nothing about live demos. I just want demos that can be seen from a live audience. Like I want I want I want to make the failure. I want the the I want the full experience. I want live demos as well. God, I hate when they have multiplayer games on stage and people are like pretending to talk to each other. Oh great move guy. Oh uh, <laughs> what a wicked move. He's he's on your six. Look out. Yeah. Look out he, <laughs> six o'clock. Six o'clock. Uh, literally uh, so literally so every good. Ubisoft conference ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just give me the dance. Whoa, oh, did you see that happy. explosion? Oh, Whoa, God. guys. That Division 2 like, showcase. Oh, no, all Division <laughs> Look at all those particle Rainbow effects. Six Siege. Oh. Wow, guys, oh, look. Man. I just got a weapon. Oh, it's a legendary. Oh. They, were, they were this close to being like, you know, like, like don't say anything. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not <laughs> sure kind it's of like a... <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like a, like a cultural thing because like, you know, Ubisoft isn't like a... Mo like for the most part, Ubisoft is like in is French, it France. Well, yeah, they're they're very European. Yeah, guys. yeah. I was gonna say they're very European. Like I'm not like not to be offensive at all, but it's like I'm not sure if it's a cultural thing that just doesn't translate well over to you no, know, you're right. Well, Western countries, or if it's just the fact that <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they just are really tone deaf and don't know their no, audience. E at all. No, EA is like America. Like fuck yeah, let's punch, punch somebody in the face, and then you got like. Then you got like the European, like Ubisoft, oh, yeah. Like, let's, let's, you know, I know what you mean. Like they're they're yeah. they're, they're, they're more quiet and tame and yeah, yeah. They, they're kind of like the the really shy drama kid in high school. That's like yeah. you know really yeah. shy, but like <laughs> as soon as they get onto the stage, they, they drink they, they drink just... nice like they drink like nice like herbal tea in the morning and they drink yeah. a really, a nice biscuit with you know. Yeah. So I... how about those PS Plus games, everybody? <laughs> yeah, we went on a real tangent about you. <laughs> Oh, oh God. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so so much. I guess I don't. I, I'm not feeling this month that much. No, it, no. Okay. No, it's maybe sweet. it'll finally make me play Squadrons. Maybe. But considering how some of the past like June lineups have been for PlayStation Plus, like especially in the lead up to E3, yeah, this is this is a pretty big letdown. Like outside of Star Wars Squadrons, which I appreciate just for the fact that we're getting such a triple a game so soon yeah. on the service yeah like it's i, I don't really yeah care but I, I don't think people are going to care as much though because you got ratchet coming out in june and then you yeah. got the next game we're going to talk about so it's still yeah, it's a shame absolutely. it's a shame sony's too big for e3 now hmm. yeah although we we don't want to repeat past conversations just yet <laughs> um all right well yeah i guess we'll move on now so final fantasy 7 integrade I'm still not a fan of the name, but we have some brand new previews from it. Um, Seb, we... uh, I guess I'll pass it off to you again because you're. I'm assuming you're the Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, whatever it is to something European. Um, I mean, considering you guys, group. considering you guys call it Dragon Quest Dragon Age, and you guys don't, I never played Final Fantasy VII. Like, I'm definitely the JRPG guy of the. That's it. The yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the word. The concept. Yeah. I will so, say, I I almost said Dragon Age to annoy you. I knew I knew it was Dragon Quest. <laughs> well, now I know you're doing it to annoy me, so it won't work. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm absolutely doing it to annoy you later. Anyways, so <laughs> what what do you think of well, first of all, what was shown because I haven't managed to catch up so with the previous what was, yet. What was shown was mainly gameplay of Yuffie and uh, Sonin fighting uh, enemies. But, uh, yeah. so the first thing that jumped out to me was that Yuffie can throw her shuriken at boxes, like, from a distance, so, like, get items and stuff. Yeah. And, and they also showed that you can, you only play as Yuffie, you don't play as the other guy. You, you can't switch characters like the, like, in the original, uh, so not, original. You can, you can basically issue commands to him. Yeah, you issue commands right. to him. Uh, but you can, you, you guys, you can, like, synergize your, uh, moves together, though, and stuff like that. Uh, so, you, you, you can give him, like, tactical abilities, uh. And then Yuffie has like this, like a ninjutsu ability, like where she can like turn element, like uh, 
turn like her moveset elemental. So if you're fighting like a robot and you use like like uh, the, the like the lightning power, you can like make her all her moves use like do like lightning damage to the uh, robot. Um, another cool thing that they showed was uh, Fort Condor, which was in the original uh, Final Fantasy VII, but they changed the whole uh, gameplay mechanic because nobody like nobody really likes that uh, game in Final Fantasy VII. It was trash. Uh, mm. This game is looks like it's like a strategy game that has like rock paper scissors. Like certain enemies are stronger against another enemy. It looked pretty good. Like, it wasn't like anything uh, like mind blowing anything, but it's you no, know, it's cool content for DLC. Mm. And another th- another thing, you guys you guys probably don't know what this is, but like if if you're a big Final Fantasy VII fan, they brought back the Turtle Paradise side quest where you collect posters, uh, flyers. I mean, they're spread across the whole game. Um, uh, Turtle Paradise is the name of the bar that's in uh, Wu Tai, which is Yuffie's hometown. Yeah, it's, I don't know if that's gonna do anything like move the uh, needle. Is it? Way, but, yeah, is it like just another one of those like collectathon side quests that the main game already has, or is there like some more significance to it? Or it's just a, I think it's like a collectathon thing. Yeah, like okay. side quest thing. Yeah. I wanna I wanna yeah. also point out in the trailer that uh, Yuffie slash the Final Fantasy VII team. Made the same joke I made, and I uh, refuse to believe otherwise. But uh, Yuffie does say at one point that Wu Tai is nothing to be trifled with. She says that almost <laughs> verbatim. Uh, that is absolutely a Wu Tang Clan reference. If it's not, I will be very upset. But that's absolutely a Wu Tai Clan reference. <laughs> Wu Tang. Wu Tang or Wu Tai? Wu Tai. Wu Tang. Yeah. I got too um, excited. I messed up the words, but anyway, Wu Tang Clan reference. Excuse me. I, t- to be honest though, I completely lost track of this release. Like I, I completely forgot this was coming out in just like what, just over two weeks at this point. I completely forgot this was a thing until I saw the previews. Um, the 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 integrate and Yuffie and everything. But I, I might be the only one. No, no, I'm, I'm the only one. You're who the forgot. only one. Yeah, you're the only really, one, Mitch. This I, is literally I, I, James. this this is literally part of the reason why I so desperately wanted a PS5. Besides Ratchet and Clank, I'm, I'm sorry, Mitch. I've been yeah. counting down the days until four mode. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. okay. Photo I mode. mean, that yeah. doesn't count. Okay. He's not even excited about Yuffie. He doesn't give a shit about Yuffie. He's just, <laughs> he's just excited about the fucking photo mode. Uh, um, um, I, so I want to talk about I want to talk about my reactions to. So I watched the IGN gameplay footage. They had to basically yeah. kind of use B roll. And talk over, um, and talk over some of it. Uh, so I want to say, did, oh, I was going to say, quick, just quickly, did they actually play the game, or did, were they just like handed out a bunch of B-roll that they could react? to? I think it was B-roll. I don't think they were actually okay. playing it, but they they yeah, got to look at off. a lot of gameplay and how it looked, and and uh, yeah, you know, so that's something at least. Um, but yeah, mm. so I mean, my impressions of of it were okay. First off, wow, very gorgeous. Uh, second, the gameplay looks incredible. Uh, it looks really fluid and easy to change from different types of attacks from Yuffie, like we were talking before. You can change um, what kind of attacks you're doing, electricity or fire or whatever. Um, and uh, that looks really cool. Um, there's like this little separate bar from your ATB bar, or not separate bar, but there's basically like a synchronicity thing where if you build up, build it up, and it's not clear how you build it up, but if you build it up in a certain way, you and uh, Sonnen, Sonnen, uh, Sonnen. Thank you. I don't know him. Uh, no, but he's if, a new uh, character. Oh, okay, cool, great. Yeah. Uh, there's my excuse. Um, but yeah, you and Sonnen can do these duo attacks. They really remind me of the duo attacks that you can do in Kingdom Hearts Three with Goofy or with Donald. Um, mm-hmm. But this looks a whole lot more polished and also looks better integrated than those were. Uh, as much as I thought those were cool. Yeah, and Yuffie, Yuffie. Yeah. Yuffie's combat is very uh, Devil May Cry ish. Like it's very like way over the top, like flash, like bayonet are like fast it's, and uh, it's mm. yeah. And, it's and, very and, fast. and also Devil May Cry, like speaking of Devil May Cry, uh, the soundtrack was like a metal song. It was pretty badass. It, it, it was a Devil May Cry song. It was really awesome. It was, it was very Devil May Cry, and I loved it. Uh, yeah. And I wish nothing but heavy metal success for Yuffie uh, in her DLC. Yeah, that, was, that, didn't, that caught me off guard, but it was a really awesome song. for. Uh, yeah. She, she had done that before. Uh, I think her voice actor, I don't know her name off the top of my head, but she seems to be doing a really good job with what she's been given um i didn't obviously there wasn't like a ton of dialogue this was a lot of gameplay but when yuffie did talk i was like yeah that sounds like yuffie like that sounds like 
the Yuffie I know from Kingdom Hearts 2 slash 3. <laughs> I know that's not saying a lot, but that that's where I know Yuffie from. Um, no, she she's pretty much the same as in the original and Advent Children, so... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm not up on my... You know, I never finished the original she's a, and all she's that She's a quirky stuff, character. So. Like, she just... Yeah. She talks a lot. She gets herself in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's great. Yeah. Well, she is. Um, yeah. She's got a fucking get get the fuck out shuriken, and I'm I'm way into that. Uh, it's very cool. So yeah, I thought her combat looked amazing, um, and the boss fights looked really cool. Uh, it just looks good. I mean, it just looks damn polished. It's pretty much the same thing you could say for um, Forbidden West or any of the other kind of first party games we've been seeing lately. I'm sure it's probably what we're going to be saying of uh, seeing saying when we see God of War Ragnarok. Um, but who knows when that'll happen. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it it just looks great, and it's one of the reasons I got to be. I wanted to get a PS5 so bad because I did not want to miss out on this. Yep, I agree. This game looks uh, really great. I'm excited for this DLC. Uh, and, uh, and it's canon, so you you have to play it to, or you're not gonna know. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but like, I just that, it ties it, into know, the next. Game. It has to be emphasized that Tetsuya Nomura is involved. You have to play the DLC. If you don't, you will be lost in a million abysses <laughs> within abysses. Uh, and you will not understand the story. I am sorry, but you do have to play the DLC. Yeah, right. especially, especially since um, the especially since you don't need, like it, it's all new story. So like they're making all this up for the remake. So, so so the actual cost for the DLC itself is like fifteen dollars, right? Like if you already you have, we didn't even get a price yet. I um, thought it was twenty. I thought they announced twenty. Maybe not. Fifteen or Maybe twenty, I mean, like right. around. All right, let's go with the hypothetical that it's fifteen or twenty. Do we know how long the DLC is, or? Because, like, like, do we know if it's going to be, like, one of those, like, sh- sort of, like, shorter ones, like, three hours, with, where, you know, mm. there's not much to it? Or do we know if it's going to be, like, a bit more extended, like, five, maybe eight hours? Like, I'd, I th- I'd say eight hours would probably be a bit of a stretch, but... Uh, I feel like... I want to say it's going to probably be eight to ten hours. I think it's going to be a okay. full-on, like, DLC. I don't think it's just going to be, like, an extra two-hour story or anything. I think it's going to okay. be a full, like, arc in the story. Okay, yeah. I could be wrong. That, but I, that sounds uh, pretty good. Th- yeah, yeah. That doesn't sound too bad at all. All right. Uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, you guys. It's know it's other... hard for Mitch to be negative about things that seem really really good. Actually, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll find a way. You know me. Um, That's right. Any other uh, any other comments you guys want to make? No, I think we uh, hit on everything. Thoughts? Yeah, it, it looks yeah. it looks great. I'm really excited for the game. Uh, give it to me now. Thank you. Um, so for our next topic, we have, uh, Dragon Age, sorry, Dragon Quest, <laughs> um, I love this. this is... anniversary showcase. Can we yeah. make this catch on? Can we do this every time we bring up Dragon oh, Age? It's, it, it, it's absolutely What's that sound? It's yeah. the sound of a hundred, it's a million weebs crying out in pain. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the disturbance in the forest. <laughs> just millions of weebs cried out in pain at once. Yes. Good. Good. Oh, because God, you just pissed off like oh. the, this, you, you. You know, Dragon Quest is the third most popular franchise in Japan, and it's it's gigantic. You're shitting me. Yeah, I'm, Seb, I, Seb and I had a, a like a long discussion about what's the most po- what's big in Japan, so to speak. Yeah, and Dragon I, I Quest think we, is, is beloved, like beloved. Good Jesus. thing we. Good thing we don't have an audience in Japan then. I don't the think we're we have not an big audience. in Japan. Like, we're not big in Japan. The only two franchises. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, this podcast ensures we will never be big in Japan. Go ahead, Seth, sorry. <laughs> the only two franchises bigger than Dragon Quest in Japan is Pokemon and Final Fantasy. So that's saying, and that's Jesus. Square Enix developer. Uh, third thing. So Dragon Quest, 35th anniversary. Like, because for some reason, everybody's anniversary is this year. I don't know what it is, like Mario, yeah. Zelda, Donkey Kong. It's the anniversary I mean, of video games themselves. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, technically, it's an anniversary for everything every year. But I get no, what she means. <laughs> no, all right, all right, like, big shot. The big one. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no. But uh, yeah. so Dragon Quest. So the, it, it was only like twenty minutes, so there wasn't a lot. But they announced like five or six games. Uh, I won't talk about all of them because they're not all on PlayStation. Some of them are. One of them was like a mobile game. But uh, so Dragon oh. Quest Ten Online, which is a uh, uh, next year is their ten year anniversary. Uh, that's like an MMO. Uh, but like. But Dragon Quest Ten Offline, which was was like the big new announcement, there was it's like a chibi like smaller version of that to make it look like nostalgic. And it has the same exact story, but you can play it offline. So, so a lot of people were really excited about this. 
and then they were and then they announced that like it's only, it's not coming to the west it's only japan only so it, that pissed a lot of people off including myself like no i would have played this and uh it we probably will get a, a western release eventually but you know like it probably won't be like a year and a half from now and it's it's not planned essentially is is what you're saying yeah like it's yeah not, yeah unfortunately but uh yeah. but what, what is coming to the west is uh dragon quest 3 like a remake it's called a uh, dragon quest 3 hd 2d remake it's kind of it's basically in the same style as octopath uh people are really excited about this and, i did uh, now that you mentioned that actually i think i saw screenshots of that earlier but i just shrugged it off thinking it was octopath <laughs> well same same uh you know square enix but yeah. uh and they are they are planning on make on making a uh, uh, dragon quest one and two the same way so they're gonna re they're gonna remake all three games so people are mm. really excited about that i can see it on your faces so uh <laughs> dragon quest treasures is the, it was the other game that they announced it kind of i guess it's in the style of builders you guys ever played builders or anything like that it's on game I, pass i've seen it i haven't played it you, but i've seen it you know it, it. right yeah okay so it, that, that focuses on eric which is like the thief guy from dragon quest 11 do you guys ever play dragon quest 11 no it's a really great game on playstation i really recommend it and it's on game pass for free uh uh so that was like that's just like an open world game that like people collect treasures i think uh, people are really excited about this game like it has its audience i don't know if it's gonna i know it's, it's not gonna move the needle like like the next game i'm gonna say it does but i know people are really gonna dig this it, it seems like a very uh good switch game because i don't i don't know if it's the kind of game i'd play on the big screen but but the big one obviously is dragon quest 12 which you know is incredible like i'm so hyped for this game uh dragon quest 12 you can tell by just by the logo it's very it's very more they, they say it's gonna be a lot more adult because the logo is very dark and serious and it has like flames and it kind of has like the final fantasy 16 like edge to it i was i was gonna yeah. say yeah like the that idea immediately brings final fantasy 16 yeah. to mind the way you've got you know the you've got the black and reds and then you've got like exactly. the blood and the the big swords yeah yeah can i Spring um Sorry, can I create a tangent here real quick? Mm -hmm. um, you said what well, there was a game a second ago that you said you wouldn't play on the big screen. Oh, um, Treasures. Yeah. Dragon Quest Treasures. What game would you guys just generally play on uh -huh. the big I know you mean like a TV screen, but like the big screen. Is there I get it. Is it like, um, like a cinema screen? Is there a game that you would like really want I would, to play I would on play a big the screen? Last was, I would play The Last of Us Part 2 on a cinema. Yeah. Every PlayStation yeah. first party game I'd play on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. God of War I'd probably play. Uncharted God. Four. Imagine, Uncharted oh my 4. God! Imagine God of War on the big screen. I'd probably cry. That oh. the music. That imagine, okay, imagine we have like a fucking full orchestra just backing up every every single time. Like, In so, person. like every time you you enter a battle, but you back away, like the orchestra has to quickly stop and then start again. <laughs> now, could you imagine playing Last of Us Part Two and there's a guy next to you playing the guitar? Like, <laughs> you get uh, Gustavo Santa Santa Lala. Yeah. So Lala, he, he's just like sitting, like just in the seats behind you in the theater, just like quietly strumming the Last of Us. He just says like, and then when when music isn't playing or or it's being being played by the other guy, he's like, you know, this game's really brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um. So anyway, yeah. Sorry, I derail your your segment. Uh. So you know, the funny thing about like Square Enix, they get like they get. For all the like lighthearted games they do, they also they always get in a phase where they get really dark and just, they get like really serious games. It happens. They go back and forth all the time. But uh, so uh, the difference in this game is uh, they said the command system and like the battle mechanics are going to be totally different from the other games. And there's going to be player choices. They're going to play some kind of role. So it seems like they're maybe going for like a player, like a kind of like a Bioware esque kind of like game, like stories structure uh so I'm, I'm really excited about that and when, when they say they changed the battle mechanics it makes me think they're gonna go for the final fantasy 7 remake kind of style because you know dragon that... quest is notoriously turn-based so mm. yeah that would that be would controversial be, would... as hell i would imagine oh, yeah very. a lot of people were not happy about final fantasy 7 remake not being turn-based uh i can like i don't i, I as I don't while i would personally be more inclined to play it if it had real-time combat because i'm not a big turn-based guy uh that's gotta suck just slowly seeing your favorite franchises if you're a turn-based 
fan. Yeah, that was seeing like less yeah. and less turn based games being yeah. made. Only ones that really yeah. do it that really great is like Persona Five because it's very stylized. But yeah, because people wanted a pure remake of Seven, they didn't want like a, an action version of it. But yeah, mm. so I mean, are not it, go ahead, go ahead. It, it it's kind of like the same people like in the Resident Evil community who. Uh, you know, all up in arms because the recent remakes have been over the shoulder and don't have the fixed camera angles. Like, I get it, but at the same time, like, like for the remakes, at least, mm. you know, they're being remade for this day and age, not just remade. Yeah. Like, they're being, like, Resident Evil 2 Remake especially, like, it's being remade as if it was being developed in 2019, which, which mm. it was, but, like... Yeah. It, it's being re- developed at this point in time, not yeah. however many years ago. Like, because if it's, you know, like, if you just updated the graphics and stuff, it'd really just be a remaster to a certain extent. But, you know, like, a remake is, you know, sometimes... Yeah. And, like, it like it, it broadens the general accessibility, because, like, I'd say a vast quantity of people prefer real-time combat as opposed to turn-based combat. Like, I, I might oh, yeah. be wrong somehow, well, that's but like I'd say majority of people, yeah, yeah. majority of but people Even, like, outside of, combat. outside of the remakes, like, you've got, um, like, Final Fantasy fifteen moving to real-time combat, and now, like, yeah. it's like, Seb, you're speculating, Dragon Quest Twelve moving to real-time combat. If you're a turn-based yeah. combat fan, that's, like, two of the biggest turn-based combat franchises moving away from that. That's got us thing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, like, like I said, uh, uh, JRPG fans play JRPG games everywhere. Like, there's niche games you guys probably never heard of. There's, they, there, there's always games for them, so don't feel... So the, maybe in the mainstream games, it sucks for them, but, like, there's always there's plenty of turn-based games for them to play, so... True. So the so and they're also like you know anti like mainstream too. Oh, I don't. You play Final Fantasy? Well, they, they love taking that stance too. So sure. Weeps, weeps. Um. So yeah, like uh, I don't mind the modern remake of games. I don't mind changing the uh the combat and stuff. Like I loved Resident Evil Two remake. I thought it was mm-hmm. incredible. That's exactly the Resident Evil I want. Like I think that was the perfect style of what I want from a Resident Evil game. That third person, but but making it survival horror. I'm not. I'm still not crazy about the first person, and I'm still not. And then Resident Evil Three uh, t- cut like too much of too much out, like the whole clock tower, mm. and it was a little too more. It was a little too actiony for me. It was still good, but I, for me, t- in my opinion, but it but it was like a seven out of ten. Not like why Resident Evil Two remake was like a nine point five for me. Like it was masterpiece. Yeah. Resident it's, Evil Three it's, was it's agreeing in, in wildly different ways right now, but you know, <laughs> yeah. Continue. Yeah. So. So like Resident Evil Three, there was a big lot of sections they just totally cut out, and it was already a short game. I don't know why they did that. I feel like they rushed it for the multiplayer, but I'm going on a tangent. No, I I feel like I mean I feel like it's the somewhat the opposite where they rushed the multiplayer completely and that was its own thing. But I feel like yeah, at least the like final product, the way it feels like, is that they made free remake in a sense that it was supposed to be like an action movie like mm-hmm. you know like depending on how quickly you go through like you can get it through in like two two and a half hours which is like the standard movie running time like for a feature film mm-hmm. your like, first time it, yeah exactly like it it feels like they made it more so to be like an action movie rather than an, a video game yeah, because, because like it's yeah. very linear, it's very on the rails, it's very Absolutely. like sort of cinematic, yep. Yep. which is it was barely any backtracking. It was only a little bit, but it was mainly you go one path, and you just follow the yeah you follow the yeah. the rail yeah exactly especially the exactly. especially the first like what an hour like first twenty five minutes you you basically just looking at the scenery, which was exactly. great. It was I, mean, I really enjoyed that. It was just like but it, comparing it to Resident Evil Two Remake, it yeah it falls yeah. apart completely Absolutely. for me for me yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't really have much more to add about Dragon Quest. I'm excited. Nope. Yep. Uh, no Dragon one else has anything 12. to say about Dragon Age. I, yeah, I have Dragon thing to Quest. say, but they're not about Dragon Age or Dragon no, Quest. No. <laughs> oh, whatever. I did they that by accident. I was thinking too much about Resident Evil Three and how much I disagree with y'all. So that that was a genuine accident, Seb. Uh, all right. Uh, well, we'll move on to the next um, news 
idea. I don't know. There's there's so many of these. Um, so we had a Sonic Central show as well as in addition to everything else this week. I, um, yeah. Which? How many of you guys watched that? Me. I watched it. Like, I watched. Live. I, I, I watched it. Right it. I watched, I watched it like a few hours ago before we started. Okay. Um, well, in I think so more than me. I think in keeping <laughs> with the Sonic theme, we should really get through this segment fast. All right, let's see if we can speed run Sonic run. This oh, all the Sonic fans are screaming internally again. You pissed <laughs> off too few. You, you pissed <laughs> off two major franchise like fan bases and. Uh, I'm trying minutes. to be really. We're trying to be respectful. Of, all right, uh, that was not respectful. I'll, I will, I will take the hit for all of you guys. Send all of the hate to my Twitter at Untitled Smithy. Just send it all there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sure, sure. You want me to handle this topic, uh, Mitch? Sure. Yeah, I, I was going to say you guys know more than I do. So yeah, I know, I know <laughs> a couple of things. Okay, I'll start yeah, with the, okay. the Sonic Sonic Origins, which was the compilation of Sonic the Hedgehog one and two and three. And Knuckles and Sonic, and then Sonic CD. I don't know if that's coming to PlayStation. Uh, they didn't confirm that, but I think it is. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's all the old games on a one compilation. That's really exciting because I don't, I don't. There's no really no way to play those games unless you have like an old console, I think, or a computer, or or unless you yeah. play um, the remaster or remake of them that happened a couple of years ago. I forget what it's called. Something, but... Yeah, something. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um, I I think I'm the only person who's the one thing that I'm excited about. From this presentation, apart from the sick merch, by the way, did you guys say. see the merch? Yeah, um, I want, I want that gold chain with the Sonic head. Like that was. I just, have you seen the? Have you seen the Adam Sandler? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want oh, that. So good. Um, Ten thousand dollars, but I want. Yeah. But the um no the one thing that I am excited about is Sonic the Fighters, yeah. in Lost mm. Judgment. Yeah. I mean, I did. I, I know none of you played Sonic the Fighters, but. Uh, I I don't even know how I managed to play that game, but it's so fun. It's mm. it's such a fun fighting game. Yeah, I'll play um, it on the. I'll play it in that game. I'll go into arcade and just try it out. It really is there. called Sonic the V Fighters. I I thought uh-huh. that James was making up shit, but it really <laughs> is called Sonic the Fighters. I just want that to be clear that, to our audience. That that sounds like the most. How do I say this without sounding like the piece of shit? Like it sounds like the most. Japanese title for a video game. <laughs> it's, not really, of episode. it's not really a surprise. Well, they've done they they basically turned Sonic into every little thing. They made him a werewolf. They made him. I mean, they did too. Yeah, they had they had he had a relationship with a human girl. He had like yeah. Uh, uh, Plus, he was we it was a racing game. We ride like hoverboards. So that listen, Sonic <laughs> the Fighters has a whole story mode. By the way. Are they? Is that going to be playable oh, in Judgment? Not sure, I didn't say. I don't think because I want to play through that again. It's actually quite a good. All right, story. So like you fight, we, we you a, fight. We have, Mer- we have a murder, but like, hold on, I gotta play this game. So we're yeah, gonna... yeah. You, well, you fight Metal Sonic as like the one of the final bosses in that game. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, up I in a space station. The, he's the usually the, he's usually a villain. Go ahead. The dude. big news is uh, that Sonic Colors is getting a remaster. I don't think that's uh, the big uh, news, Colors. but yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Lots of people have fond memories of Sonic Colors it's a great game. Uh, playing on the DS and then playing on the Wii. Second biggest uh, news. Um, so, so a lot of people are excited who are not named James. Um, I didn't play Sonic Colors myself. I'll be honest, I played the games on the Genesis when they first came out, and then I never played any other Sonic game after that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't play Sonic Adventure 2? Whoa, I, you didn't play oh, Sonic did. Heroes? I, I played, I think I played the battle game of Sonic that was on the DS. I think that was it, though. Wow. I never played any of the 3D games. Yeah, I think you might be the first person I know, like, around my age that didn't play Sonic Adventure 2. Not that, I don't, like, I'm, not that I'm judging you, but... Like, well, you're judging I'm judging me, you. <laughs> I, was that the one where you drive down the hill? That's the one where you ride down the hill on the skateboard? Or is that the different one? He had, like, a snowboard. You know, rolling in, rolling down at the speed of, like, you know, the, the song. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, uh, I know, I know. That's the like, first game with Shadow the Hedgehog and stuff. Uh, I, I can't believe you didn't play Sonic Heroes. I, I played Sonic a game Heroes. on the DS. 
<laughs> that was that was a battle game between no. different characters. I don't remember what the f- fuck it was called, but yeah, that's the only that's the newest Sonic game I've played. Sonic Sonic Adventure Two had a cool like section where you take care of Chows, like the little guys, and it was like a whole extra game to it. You were like raising little babies and making them race with each other. Yeah, <laughs> you can what customize the them if they're good or evil. You can customize. Oh, I think them. it was called Sonic Rush. Maybe it was called Sonic Rush. Sonic that's Rush. What it is. We're that's really, not we're not, I'll tell you what, we're not rushing through this uh, segment, are we? No, <laughs> you're, too you're too you're slow. You're too slow. Oh, sorry, Grant. I remember that. But yeah, yeah um, so yeah, Colors is uh, exciting. It's also made, it's made by Blind Squirrel Entertainment, which is the people that worked on Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So Ooh. they're it's in good hands on that regard. Uh, they updated the look, game's look and feel, and they added a new, like all, like all new features. And there's a whole new mode called Rival Rush. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what that that is, but I think it's, I think you race Mario around a track or something like that. I think that's what it is. is it Mario? Oh. I really? thought it was Mario. I could be wrong though. There was a, there was, there was even, there was a cool like little video where like Sonic was like doing in the Olympics and he was like balling and shit. That was pretty funny. From the, the showcase, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up next because, yeah, that was that was great. The was um, funny. the Tokyo twenty twenty, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> video game. But yeah. uh, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, th- so th- we also we're also getting Sonic Forces, Sonic Mania, and Team Sonic Racing on PS now, uh, in a couple of days on June first. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty and cool. then at the end they teased uh, a new title for. Uh, it's cross gen PS4, PS5. Yep, there's a new Sonic game coming out next year. It's, it, uh, it, they say it, there's a lot of hype for this game because they say it's the game that's going to save the franchise because they've, you know, Sonic's been on a major downhill from the last I don't it, know, twenty years. But they always say that though. Like I'm, I, I, yeah. I want to be optimistic, but they always say that. <laughs> They're yeah. just setting themselves up yeah. for disappointment. The only the ones end. I remember that are that were like really good was like gener- was uh colors and uh was it generations it was on ps3 yeah. i think yeah. yeah yeah generations yeah yeah wasn't there wasn't there like an actual like official sonic 4 that was like released in episodes or whatever which i did anyone actually end up liking that that one or because i i think i remember there was only like two episodes or something and i just stopped and uh... the, the... The, the silence kind of proves my point, I guess. Kind of mixed. Um... You got mixed reception. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Because Sonic's, yeah, like Sonic's, I... Sonic's is like it. It it hasn't been a great franchise. Like it, it has some good ones, but it's mostly bad. Like it's been a bad franchise it's for a while. Th- that's the funniest thing because like I keep hearing everyone like say like Sonic, Sonic. It's one of the greatest like gaming franchises ever, and yet. All the fans seem to do is just bash the games that have come out. Or make them just like, yeah, fan base, uh, you know. Oof. Oh, fan bases are fan bases, but like, either way, like, even just like the general audience reaction mm-hmm. to a lot of them have yeah. been like me- meddling to say the least. And it's just, they I- have I'm some, so confused. They have some real meddling? Fans. Middling, meddling, same, same. Okay, meddling sure. kids in that no further you question middling, you middling kids <laughs> that fucking dog. you you peaked in your teenage years you middling kids you'll never go anywhere you'll never be anything Uh-oh. in this town all right okay well like scoob let's move on to the next episode a new segment uh-huh the, okay, that was, was that, that was the Mickey worst Mouse? transition that, that we've ever gotten <laughs> is that shaggy or mickey Mouse? Casey Kasem well, is fucking rolling in his grave right now, Mitch. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I was more so going for sad, Matthew Lillard, man. who is still thankfully with us. But um, point taken. Um, <laughs> okay, let's move well, on and never talk about uh, that let's again. Just, no, we'll just, just... just call it a night. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, so Dying Light Two yes. had a brand new trailer as well as a release date. Um, as well as a new subtitle, "Stay Human," yes. which why? sucks. It's it's <laughs> why it's it's the most pointless subtitle that I've ever. Dying Light Two. That is all you needed. That is all you had. That's all you mm. needed. The "Stay Human" is it's 
it's because he it's, can turn it. It's because he can he can become a zombie if you get infected. So I I get that, like any like, other zombie need... media. Yeah, you... entertainment. Well, I don't <laughs> yeah, recall being actually... you get infected and die. Like that, no, that... but like it, it the the main like inherently though the goal in zombie games is to not die, is to stay human and not become a zombie. Like I, it's yeah, the majority that... of the games. Like it, it's kind of it's kind of like a superfluous subtitle slash statement like yes yeah who gives a shit like, this, game uh, looks like, this game looks like game of the year like who gives a shit really i don't care what really the game is called. Um, this game looks absolutely yeah. incredible well, you, like, you I, were... I will say i look i i never played dying light i don't know much about dying light i watched that trailer and i was like holy shit this game looks really good yeah. and that's coming from a total non-fan this looks dying, really good dying yeah dying light like one is like on most pe- a lot of people's like top five games of the generation like, well Dying Light here's is a my beloved here's my thing fan base. with this but... with this showcase it kind of and with the marketing that they've done for the game previous um it it kind of feels like they're making a lot of big promises the kind of promises that I've heard from this kind of game before that had they've ended up the other studios have ended up making right. and then not delivering on I uh, yeah I I mean I'll 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 come at it from this perspective so I've been more so keeping track of the let's just say actual middling development of this game and there's been a lot of reports of like you know upper management being complete assholes i probably been some you know allegations and stuff thrown towards certain members of the staff maybe i can't verify that creatives but... and writers leaving because of scandals and yeah what have you. yeah just like the the development for this game has been terrible. Like the big thing that I took away from it was that the either the company lead or the project lead was like essentially just like kept interfering and like he he like you know the developers they present ideas to them to him and he just go no like he'd go no and apparently the head of PR is also that man's wife. And so that creates a bunch of uh, problems where, you know, like, they don't want to go to PR because that creates a conflict of interest there. I don't even know how that's a... I don't even know how that's right, a thing. Was it, is this the Techland? This uh, is Techland, or, yeah. Or Oracle sure. was... Yeah, I remember, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. And so I've got a lot of skepticism there. And the fact that this... The fact that this is a game that's also releasing in December with a ton of troubled development issues doesn't get my hopes up. I've call me call me, you know, paranoid or superstitious, but I'm I'm a little stitious about this one. Uh, coming out. I, I totally I, agree. I mean I, I'm not to downplay all that, but like I just I don't know I don't have enough information it, to, to really yeah, clarify. No, like, it, I gotta talk about the game itself. It looks Yeah, like it looks good, but like I mean I'm I'm just not sure if it's going to live up to the hype personally uh, yeah i, think, I mean that's I think, the thing I, like i think i think it's a strong minority no because here's the thing uh oh, Seb, yeah, right absolutely like it, absolutely. in the the gameplay that they showed it looks very good but it's not i mean unless the game is just absolutely awful it's not that difficult to make a thing look good when they control the angles that you're seeing it from so exactly. i think you have to exactly. take into account uh all the information that we have sure, uh, that's, any, that's every game though so. Well, yeah, but I just think uh, cautious optimism is probably mm. the best approach for this game. Well, you guys are really trying to derail my hype here, huh? <laughs> no. I'll, I'll remember I, that. When, like, when I stop being excited. So I completely forgot that Techland had any controversies, but now that y'all mentioned that article, I, I yeah. definitely remember it, uh, reading yeah. one, an article about it. Um, yeah, old, that sucks. Good old Jason Schreier, yeah. yeah. It, still, it still looks... Like really good. The gameplay looks really it impressive. Does. I'm, I'm gonna try to get Seb's hype back on a little bit because I do I do think the game looks again as a complete. I don't know anything about Dying Light. I've only heard about it. I've never played it. Never seen anyone play it. I just heard people talk <laughs> it up uh, or mention it in passing. Uh, it looks yeah. really cool. And if they actually do deliver on your choices about like so basically like you can do cer- you can interact with certain guilds or teams or whatever, and that'll affect how the city looks. And then that'll also affect, um, you know, might affect like who you're allied with and who you're not. You know, you can be more heartless or you could go 
um, with um, you know what what you're feeling in, in your in your heart. I guess I don't know how else to say yeah. it. Uh, and pick one team or the other. Um, there's this whole thing about like the nighttime changing everything, which I think was in the original. Um, but like you're just in like constant survival mode. But there's a lot of parkour. I guess they got like parkour, one of the parkour. best parkour guys, one of the ge- best like parkour guys in the world to like mm-hmm. star as the main character and help advise with the game for it so to be accurate. So uh, yeah. for whatever that's yeah. worth. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me just uh give you like facts about the game like because we went on a tangent before we, i even got a chance to talk about the game uh no, but uh it takes place 15 years after the zombie apocalypse why the first game was more like when it was first starting if i remember correctly uh so it's a post-apocalyptic game there's only one city left in the world which is the city which is in europe uh there's three factions that control the city uh there is uh, the survivors, which are kind of like safe havens around the city. There's the peacekeepers, which is like a law and order police kind of guys. And then you got the renegades, which is like ex-prisoners, mm-hmm. like Mad Max looking, Borderlands kind of crazy guys. Um, yeah. you, and you can you can help them or or fight them. You, it's kind of like Fallout in that regard. Like, And it really changes the story, how you handle it. And they said it's really complex writing and characters. Um, they're going to make some real hard decisions. Uh, and there's also like thugs, bandits, and outlaws all around, but like, but they're they're around in the daytime, but at nighttime the zombies come out, and uh, and if you're outside the UV rays, you're gonna get swarmed by zombies, and you have to jump around the rooftops and do parkour to avoid them. Even then, every room is gonna have zombies chasing you. You're constantly getting chased. That's that's where Dying Light really shines in the first game because the gameplay was king. Gameplay will always be king, and that's why Dying Light is was a great game. Uh, and uh, this game lo- is no exception. This game it looks absolutely incredible in that regard. Um, it's also like kind of does the Last of Us thing where there's mutated uh, zombies because it's it's been a while now, and it's like you go to hives, and if you go in the hives, best time they said the best time to go in the hives is when the zombies are out and about. So you if you go if you go in the hive, uh, you find like really great items probably to improve your character like health and stuff. So you mm-hmm. take the risk of doing that. There's also RPG elements where you can choose to be either acrobatic and quick and do like drop kicks and stuff like that, or you can choose to be like an aggressive close combat fighter against the zombies, or you can choose to use gadgets and stuff like that. So it does have RPG elements that, that look really cool. The, like the the it looked very fluid. I was really impressed by that. And then um, you, you do you do like you you can I guess get infected and turn into a zombie. I don't know if how that works. They didn't really go into details on that one uh mm-hmm. what else they didn't really like the showcase itself it was really cool they did they were like on a really cool like post-apocalyptic set like it was set piece i thought that they did a great job with the interview I, they put a lot of uh effort into that it was what also else? noticeable to me that on the ign video for their trailer a lot of it was very positive in terms of fan reaction a lot yeah. of people saying the trailer looked really good uh, that it sounds good, that, yeah. So, I mean, I'm always surprised whenever I see an IGN comment section that's largely positive. Yeah. That place is just rough. Totally. But anyway, so that's a good sign to me yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. this is impressing fans. Like I said, Dying Light, I've seen a lot of people say Dying Light's like their top five game of the generation, last generation. Like, people love Dying Light. Uh, but one last thing, uh, like Dory uh, said, mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, it, it does have a huge open world. Uh, they said it's four times bigger than uh, the first game. Uh, but wow. But like how you uh, handle the factions is, does change the city around. So as Dory said, uh, so you, you everybody's gonna have a different playthrough, which is which is really cool for in my opinion. Um, and they said it's broken into seven distinct regions. So so pretty big. And then uh, and then finally there's four player co-op like the first game. So you, you do have multiplayer co-op. So. Yeah, this game looks like the my potential game of the year, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely it's probably gonna be my top five. Just by I could probably make it that prediction that I'm blown away by this. So yeah. Mm. I'm excited. Cool. cool. Um any other any any other thoughts anyone else has at all or Parkour? I'm still probably not gonna pick it up. It's I don't think it's really for me, but I, I hope it goes well and I also hope Techland actually treats their employees better that would be nice mm, yeah yeah i look i do legitimately hope this ends up being good but i as you know as you saw i have my skepticism i have my schisms about it 
Uh, but I, I do hope it's good. I still need to get onto the first dying light, so hopefully I'll patch that up at some point. And um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned it also. We probably did, but they've also announced the December 7th release date, which, I mean, it's an interesting spot to put it at, but, yeah. I mean, hopefully it works out for them because it's Great. kind of like... Yeah. Hey, that it, means kind of, we can get yeah. it for our birthdays. That is true. That is true, James. That's that's a birthday win right there. Convenient. Is... I get ratchet for my convenient. But, uh, I'm getting Kenna. Oh, look at y'all, you. Y'all are y'all are hacked. I'm getting Kenna. Oh, uh, god damn it. God yeah, damn it. Uh, what I was gonna say, but yeah, like if you want, I recommend playing the first game. It, it it's on sale yeah. for like thirteen dollars right now, and then the, I think the platinum edition is like hundred dollars, but they, it's seventy five percent off if you're a plus member, so it's twenty five bucks to get the best okay. version of the game. So I really recommend that game. Like I said, it, people people love Dying Light. It's like they like I'm telling you, it, they I've seen people like you know, well I, they're probably saying that just to troll people, but I've seen people say it's better than Last of Us and things like that. So I will really... say, I it is the best game that I bought in a sale and downloaded onto my PS4 and then never touched. Well, you have oh. until December to play it, so I recommend it. I don't bullshit I do, you guys. I do want to. I just, I, I've not found the time. Hmm. Alas. All right. Alas. All right. It well, we'll impressive. move on. I hope it's good. Oh. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we'll move on to the second last um, news segment slash announcement of this podcast. Um, Far Cry Six, yet another showcase. Um, what do we? What do we all think? Cause My God, I, this I'm looks. Excited like a ubisoft game it does it does it absolutely does so listen my uh, first my first thought about this after like so we did uh reactions to the horizon forbidden west deeply and we'll get to that yeah um but i uh watched obviously this came out after that and i so obviously mm. i watched it after that um and i think that them releasing this following up the horizon forbidden west state of play was a bad move because and oh, i don't yeah. know i i don't know if uh it's just because uh i just watched the horizon forbidden west gameplay but there were some shots in the far cry 6 trailer that mm. made it look like a ps3 game yeah it character looked... models are not great <laughs> there there was even like some streets that i saw that mm. were like the environment looks good, in my opinion. Some of, the, some, of those, some of those environments it's in the, the trailer... Are, like, maybe I was yeah. just too tired to look at it yeah. properly, but it looked... Some of them looked flat. Some yeah. of them looked great, but some of them... Yeah. You gotta watch it in look, 4K, look, look, the look, we're, we're, all, we're all missing the main point of Far Cry 6. You can pet the alligator. And... Even the alligator... The alligator texture looked awful. I, I, I'm sorry to... What the hell, Nick? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? This is, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to throw Ubisoft a freaking bone here. Hey, Ubisoft. First of all, um, I love the name of the alligator, the Guapo, like handsome. I really like that. And then you get you get you get a dachshund, like a wiener dog. Oh, like hmm. I'm getting that game just for that. Like I just absolutely the love dog. the wiener dog. Wait, and, do you do you call it a sausage dog or a wiener dog? Wiener. I call him a wiener dog. What the fuck? Americans are weird, right? Yeah, he's a wiener. He's a Jim God dog. No, that sounds like he's a phallic <laughs> object. Yeah, but, but, no. but it is a phallic object. It is. But it's a phallic creature. Uh, I mean, sausage isn't that much better. God damn it. Um, no, it's well, really I mean, not. I don't know why it... y'all are claiming European superiority, especially on this. Really? Um, this yeah. Well, I mean, we, we can claim on very many remember things. Remember the tater tot thing when they, got, they took superiority? No, I don't want to remember that. that. What the fuck? You've unlocked <laughs> no. memories. I don't want to remember that. <laughs> Just keep no. What is this? Potato gems. Going cool. oh, back in the vault, right here. Yeah. Well, I mean, his name is Chorizo, which means, which is sausage in Spanish. So, so oh, okay. So it's best of both worlds. Then I'll, yeah, I'll concede on this. So one. let me uh, let's just jump into like the story a little bit. So yeah, it takes yeah. place in a fictional Cuba. It's called Yara Island. Uh, the main character is Danny. She's a revolutionary. Uh, called the Lib- Libertad, Libertad, uh, and uh, Libertad to- probably. In- you were taught, yeah, trying yep. to overthrow uh, Anton Castillo, which is like you know, Poyo's chicken. Trying to you know, like the guy from Great uh, Breaking Los Bad. Los Poyos uh, hermanos. Yes, he yes. keeps all right. Look, 
this guy is so typecasted to hell at this point. <laughs> this guy can't catch a break. He is the bad guy no matter what. He's the bad guy in Breaking Bad. He's the bad guy in Dear White People. Now he's the bad guy in Far Cry 6. Can we do something else with this don't fucking forget, actor? Don't forget, don't, forget the boys. don't forget the Mandalorian. And, and the then boys, the Mandalorian. Yeah. He's yeah. and also I look, I just I have to bring this up. I know none of us are Latin American or Latinx or anything like that, but like mm-hmm. he is also not that as far as I'm aware, right? And I think he's no. like half Italian, half uh, uh yeah. African American or something. Well, I guess I mean, Italians are Latin technically, but yeah. You're right. Yeah, he's not, but, he's not but, but not in the way yeah, well, he's not he's he not is. Hispanic. They well, keep they keep trying to put him put him off as if he's yeah. Hispanic and he's not. Well, it's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get into that because I don't know. But okay. yeah, I, I've heard someone's like people is controversial about that. He's not Cuban. And yeah, I know. And it's... I live in South Florida, so like you know, Cubans are everywhere down here. So yeah, uh, mm, they're very passionate. So they're they're probably pissed off that he's not Cuban. But uh, yeah, so basically, uh, this game has a really what's really impressive about this game is the creativity of the weapons uh because they use mm-hmm. guerrilla warfare and uh that means they use every resource at their disposal so there's a lot yeah. of over top weapons there's a mini gun that's powered by a motorcycle engine there's a gun that's made out of cd player that shoots discs mm-hmm. at people and plays the macarena the, the macarena yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh what else uh there's a backpack that shoots missiles uh and and you can customize that Another cool thing is what they have added that you can, uh, you don't have to go guns blazing into uh, checkpoints anymore. You can, like, you can talk or bribe or sn- sneak your way into things now. That's uh, just choices such, you can pick. such a good addition because it, yeah. it kind of just became exhausting, where, like, especially in Far Cry games, where, like, literally, even if they're, like, just if you're just trying to drive somewhere, like, if, if there's, like, one just, like, suv or car of enemies that spots you you're fucked essentially like whereas i mean i i think it's a, it's a cool idea in here at least that you can talk to them or bribe to them at least like it gives it some more variety but yeah because the the old far cry games just became exhausting with the amount of like combat you'd have to do it's like no i don't want to waste ammo and resources yeah. here i just want to yeah. get to my objective yeah plus, lots, uh, lots of people saying too that this is giving them some just cause uh, mercenaries vibes as well. Oh, yeah, oh. I hope not. Though. Yeah. I, I don't like just cause at all. I'm um, just saying. I'm just report. I'm reporting the facts. I'm reporting another, the facts. Another, another cool thing is uh, there's other ways to like travel. Like you can take tunnels. You can take a car. You can take a horse. So there's all mm. like there's all, there's all these unique ways of like tackling a a place. So it's really, yeah, that's really cool. Did, Did you guys to, to quickly? Oh, sorry. I was gonna say to quickly get back to the weapons though. I I think this is pro- these are probably like the best sounding weapons in a ubisoft game i want to say like at least from the gameplay footage and i can imagine that the feedback like you know like as in hit registry and recall and all that looks really spot on as well yeah like, outside I'm, I'm... the besides the character models the reception has been quite positive i think people are really digging this. yeah yeah i i i'd say it's really just the lighting that seems to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this game though like it's the lighting is like that yeah, there's 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 the shots where like you know like I saw a shot or whatever where someone was like sort of crouching through like a bunch of like foliage and leaves and trees and stuff. The lighting looked amazing there, but like I'd imagine if you look up close, the textures would look pretty flat. Yeah. Like uh, it seems like the he- the lighting engine or whatever they've got going on is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for like the like at a distance at least I'd say. What were you gonna say, James? I uh, did. You guys call it the Wilhelm scream, right? No, I didn't. You didn't? I no. It was hard to miss. Yeah. I mean, I I, I probably could, because I only watched, and I like, I don't think we've mentioned this yet. I don't. We haven't. I just heard it. I just I I've been watching the trail. I just heard. It. Yeah. Yeah, I I only managed to catch the six minutes of of gameplay that got leaked yesterday because it wouldn't be a Ubisoft game without the game leaking. James James is putting um, down the intro. He's timestamping yeah. that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but um, yeah. So, but listen, a couple thoughts from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, as much as I thought I, the graphics in a lot of areas looked rubbish, um, the trailer was incredibly well put together. Really uh, great trailer. Um, also, can I just say, I I love E three season. This is so mm-hmm. great. Uh, 
But all we've been talking about today, gameplay demos and trailers. Usually we're talking about fucking controller colors and, and stuff like that. Just gameplay. Yeah, tra- tra- yeah fucking Mark mm. Wahlberg. <laughs> And all that shit. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Oh my god. I. I Where is the mustache? Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. the, like, ah, this is so great. It's so this yeah. is so much more fun. Um, I, I I also want to point out that they're using the band Run the Jewels uh, in the trailer, and Run the Jewels is awesome. And uh, you should all go listen to the music. But anyway, yeah, they're using Run the Jewels, which is cool. So there's also uh, camp activities. So there's a lot of like things you can do with that. Uh, I don't know. I didn't think they expanded on that. Uh, like the bases, you can, you know, conquer the map. Now, I have some negatives now. Well, I don't know if it's negatives, yeah. but it's not always for me. Right, I'm not a big Ubisoft yeah. fan. I'm just not. I don't yeah. like most of their games. But, this, well, not mostly, but I don't like most of their games, and I don't like their structure of the map where there's a giant-ass map, and you have to take over the whole map. It's just, I get bored. Yeah. And it, this is game's kind of going for that again. Uh... And uh, but the, what makes me positive about it is that there it seems like the best version of that. I think this is the best version of Far Cry to this point, like in terms of gameplay. So it might be so the like most what fun. if what but, if they like have they sort of given any ideas as to like how the map progression will unfold in the showcase at all? Or because like I know like with Valhalla, for instance, they sort of segmented it into like little mini story arcs where like you travel to like a certain right. area of the map and you right. do all the story missions there and then you return yeah. back to base and yada well, yada yada like have they outlined how the story is going to progress i don't know they didn't i don't think they said anything about the story progressing it's just like if you take over the camp the camp you, you take over the region and you just expand yeah. the re- basically you conquer the whole region uh gotcha. but yeah so, it's so fast to, for ubisoft yeah very ubisoft so like yeah. like 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 it's easy to say like oh well dying light 2 is a big over why aren't you down on more down on that well that one game that game parkour and fun mechanics this mm. game is more like is this gonna be like walking like long ass drives to a like, i don't want like a big ass over where i have to drive all the way across the map to take over a base and do it like 30 times that's you know, not I'm, that, I'm, that's, that's how it was like I'm, that. I'm gonna just be honest that for me ubisoft releasing a game is a real easy calculus uh it's ubisoft and so i'm probably not going to buy it unless i have some incredible reason to override my moral instincts of buying something from ubisoft mine's pretty easy yeah yeah i i and i i even even if i didn't have those moral problems i'm with seb i don't i these games are are, are often over bloated uh, they feel like unnecessarily overbloated and overly long. So even if I didn't have a bunch of moral qualms with Ubisoft, which I unequivocally do, by the way, um, I yeah, I, I have no interest in this, and I don't care if it does well. And <laughs> I just kind of wish Ubisoft nothing but ruins at this point. <laughs> Ubisoft is yeah. Um, Ubisoft games are like the fast food of video games. Like you know, I'm, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be pescatarian, so I just you know I can't I can't do fast food anymore. I'm sorry. They're Is like, they're, I mean, they're they taste good sometimes, but also they look disgusting, and you probably shouldn't uh, eat them. I don't know if I agree I mean, with that analogy because fast food's always good and it's fast. Ubisoft I, games are overly bloated. This is like a <laughs> yeah. This is like a nice. This is like a shitty raw. But they steak. come out. They come out all the time. It. And you just keep showing it and you can't finish it. All right, so so here's what we got to do. We got to make a game of this where we compare every studio's general games to like a, a, a food and then figure out what that food would be. Oh, God. If that's, anything, that's EA the... is McDonald's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's I, probably true. I don't know, because EA games usually look a lot better than McDonald's. That's fair. Also, I, I want to say I thought the graphics were fine. I, I looked pretty closely at the roads. I didn't notice anything out of order, but I mean, it could be another Final Fantasy VII door situation or a I, I Spider-Man the, um, situation. I think the biggest like sort of moment for me where I could tell something was off was when they actually went up to pat the alligator. Like the texture on that looked awful. Who cares? You pat an alligator. I've always wanted to do that. I'm, 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 a, floor, I'm, a, I'm a Florida man. I'm going to do it eventually. Well, I just want to remind you. Our viewers that Seb lives in Florida, so he's literally had dreams about this, about petting alligators, and now I've been close. Them. I've been pretty close. Uh, I, Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed you're still with us. House. I I live in the same country country as the Irwins, so therefore I I retain superiority over this conversation in that regards. 
Alrighty. Um, now, well, yeah, there's no arguing of that. Crocodiles are definitely yeah worse than yeah. alligators. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, any any final thoughts we have on Far Cry Six at all? Uh, um, I, I mean, again, it has a have... freaking cute little dog in a wheelchair, and you can use him to like distract enemies and kill them. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Kill enemies. That, yeah, that you can kill enemies with CDs that have the Macarena. I think that's kind of funny. I also feel like that's really stereotyping Spanish culture, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm out of my depth on that one. I don't know. It is it is cool. I'm not saying it's oh bad or whatever. Yeah, but. I haven't seen anyone get mad over Macarena. So no, I, yeah. I, 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 I just fun and I'm overanalyzing. I, I do want to Ubisoft. I just don't I, like the Ubisoft. I, I do want to say real quick. I think it has to its favor. I think it has the most interesting yeah. looking story since Far Cry Three. Oh, for sure. I mean, nah, overthrowing I, governments is always a good time. In I mean, games, in video games, of course. I, I, I'd argue, I'd argue, Far Cry Fire Five is probably uh, the more interesting out of this one, just because yeah. it's something. Cause we, we had this like, cause I'm so tired who, of who, care, who cares about I'm a bunch of Americans? Uh, and oh, like the, about... the setting wasn't what's interesting, but like just the idea of like a religious cult is more interesting to me, at least. I don't know. I'm not big on. Government. I, I'm not big I mean, on religious cults. It's been personally. so done, like crazy redneck people in America. Like it's yeah. been done so many times. Really crazy religious. People. I suppose. I, I suppose. think, you I think you're on your own on that one, Mitch. Yeah. All right. I didn't well, like it at all. whatever. I'll... This is the best I, one I, since I... three. That's what. That's, that's what I'm most excited about because I'm just a big fan of the cast and like the acting and like I'm excited. Just this is story. I love this kind of like story. A revolutionary fighting a dictator. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's what excites me the most. Uh, more than anything. it's just different, you know, than like what we've seen the last. Uh, was Far Cry Four like that? I don't. I never. I didn't play yeah, Four. It was. It was for, Far Cry Four was pretty much the same as Far Cry Three, which is pretty similar to this. Yeah, I think it's just because John Carlo, John Carlo's in it, and he's my, I was, my favorite I was, actor. I was gonna say yeah, like a, a lot of like I don't want to downplay the good aspects of this game itself, but like a lot of like from like certain people not just you guys a lot of the hype seems to be from the actors in it at least i don't want to butcher his pr the pronunciation of his name but yeah my hype is definitely from the alligator with a gold tooth and the dog I'm just true, true, that. true. that's my hype yeah all right um yeah. yeah uh anything else we want to say or are we good to move on it looks disgusting it's, uh it's a it's a game that is a far cry away from having me interested. Thank you. But I will not be <laughs> before, wait, wait, before we move on, it's an Ubisoft game. Wait, wait three days and it'll be half off. So yeah, just... there we go. That, Good consumer that will, advice. Because that's that's when the microtransactions come in as well. So be yes. be, yeah. be aware of that. For sure. Yeah. Just play just play the base uh, game. Yeah. Um also okay. if we haven't mentioned it already, it comes out on October seventh, gonna be in very packed October and November by the sounds of it. Um, so no, the, the games so. I mean, we've got the the Call of Duty is in the battlefields and whatnot already, oh, yeah, so yeah. They're, they're kind of a given. Yeah. yeah. Um, Blood is the only one. So go ahead. Oh yeah, God, God, that's true. Um, so the final news topic we have of today, we we managed to get through it all. Um, we've had the state of play for Horizon Forbidden West. Which I'm I'm still iffy on the title, but we had some gameplay reveal which I utterly loved. I as I mentioned before, I'm not, you know, the hugest on the first game, but I this this looks incredible. Um yeah. what, what do you guys so, think? Well the three of us we um obviously did the reaction stream. So uh, our thoughts are probably gonna be a sort of condensed version of those. Uh so if you yeah. want if you want our full uh sort of reactions to that go and check out that uh that yeah. live stream um but yeah personally i'm just really really excited about the full age density uh i think you mentioned it's it's yeah, not fog a lot. it's yeah, do you know yeah. what i'm actually um i'm worried no because I, I before we got on here i watched it again and yeah like I imagined myself playing it, and like I I don't see how I could play that game, um, with like the rays of light and and the fog and the foliage and everything, and not pause it literally every five seconds or less to take a photo. Oh, oh. god! Yeah, you, 
Yeah, I'm never going to get through in a spoiler cast. Spoiler cast the pipe dream, y'all. Spoiler cast the pipe dream. I'm not even going to get through the first Mitch, level. So Mitch, do you have, like, you have OBS, right? I I can. <laughs> All right. So we can oh. do the spoiler cast, and James can be on mission one. Yeah. He'll be on... <laughs> no. No, but, he uh... He even made it through the path there. But, uh, so, a couple of things that jump out to me. Well, first of all, being in the West, that was, like, it, uh, she's in San Francisco, because we saw the yeah. Golden... Golden Gate Bridge, that was pretty cool. Uh, the, the the underwater sections were awesome. Seeing all the like, that was just like the way it looked. It was just like, it, mm. and you there's finally ripple effects when she's swimming. That wasn't in the first game. There was no ripple effects at all. So that, that, that I we didn't even think of that. But yeah, I, I looked at the difference between the gameplay and I was like, wow, that it's like we've the, the water mechanics, like the water reflections and everything, just way the, the one. The yeah. weird, the one weird thing that I have noticed and that's been pointed out to me since we watched uh, it live is that Aloy seems to have three point lighting on her at all times, mm. no matter where she's standing, mm. uh, even if she's in shadow, which is kind of bizarre. It kind of feels like they've they've got these like lights permanently fixed mm. to her, mm. which I is. I guess it kind hey, of fit, fair. which I guess kind of fits the style of the game, but also yeah. doesn't Maybe. make a lot of sense. I didn't pick up on that, but I'm not the best person. The you lighting. and your lighting, James. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm gonna talk about the gameplay because it's a video game, James. Uh, so okay. so it has it has a glider called the Shield Wing. It was very Breath of the Wild, which is not a complaint. I because that was a great mechanic in Breath of the Wild. But the one of yeah. the but the big thing for me was the grappling hook, the pull caster. Was that it was like Sekiro, and you can like do it really fast. Well, I didn't like in the first game that like when you use the grappling hook, it, you had to actually climb. And it was kind of a pain in the ass. But yeah. although it still has it still has the yellow platforms that you have to climb on. I wish it was more like Breath of the Wild, where you can climb on anything. Because there's times where she just gets stuck and she can't climb on. Like why can't you just climb up? But yeah, it's not a, it's a it's a nitpick, but it's it's. I I well, I think uh, I mean here's my nitpick. Here's my nitpick, right? She was using smoke screens on fucking mechanical dinosaurs that use sensors to see. I don't really think yeah. that's gonna work, Aloy, because they probably have heat detectors. Uh, yeah. Other than that, ten out of ten, perfect game. Yeah, and that, yeah. what else was there? So, so just like you know, for the audience to be clear about the story, she goes out west because there's like this strange crimson light that's killing off all the plants and the animals and the tribes. Mm. And then uh, and there's a, there's a super storm. Like a non-stop superstorm that seems to be spreading, and it, yeah, so we'll see why that's happening. And then she's meeting new tribes, uh, and I think they're called the one she fights is called the Tenak tribe or something like that. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Wasn't the I, I I feel like because they sound similar to the ones that were in the. Forbidden Wilds or the Frozen Wilds um, DLC. I, th I think they also started with the T mm. though, so that might be why. But yeah, yeah it's, it that sounds kind of vaguely familiar to me. Yeah. But that's yeah. I don't know because uh, they didn't look like uh, they had like they definitely had like a like a Western uh, mm. Mexican Aztec kind of vibe to their designs. Cause it's out yeah. west, so I don't, yeah. So I, I didn't get that from the Frozen Wilds. You guys ever? Did you guys play Frozen Wilds? Yeah, it was oh, really good. I I got about halfway through it because yeah. the the they the, the the difficulty curve and that was big, like really big. Uh, like it was a big. Uh, maybe it's just because I was under leveled when I played. I don't it, know. But, I don't yeah, I, I don't remember. The only thing, the only difficult thing I really had in that game was the the sandworm guys and the big mm. ass bird, the pterodactyl one, thunderbird. Sure. Or whatever else. Those are the two that sure. gave me the nightmare. Uh, yeah. what else? And that's yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, thought okay. that was incredible. Hook and like all the movement and stuff like that was incredible. So the graphics, good, fluid. The mm. graphics were incredible. The combat, the hand to hand combat. This is what I was talking about earlier, or alluding to earlier. Yeah. The hand to hand combat when you can't get out your bow um, looks much improved. Um, Way I don't think better. So much better. Yeah, Way better. I think. I think. Um, I think yeah. somebody said. Somebody said like uh, Aloy ulted at one point, and she basically <laughs> did. The human. The human fights in uh, the first game were bad. They were just bad. I I don't yeah. remember I don't remember them one way or the other. So that means they were at best probably forgettable. Yeah. Yeah, it was not yeah, good. Yeah, they, they, good compared to the. Dinosaurs. I feel like 
the biggest I I'd say like clearly the biggest improvement they did for the melee combat is in this is that they gave the, her attacks more weight and momentum to it. Yeah. Because like in in the original, it just kind of felt like she was waving her stick around and it would occasionally make yes. contact yes. Yes. with an enemy, and you'd get like you know that that flack sort of sound that. Whereas in here, it looks much more. Like, it, it's not the same, but it's kind of like how in, like, um, Marvel Spider-Man, how, like, it kind of gives you that same, like, feeling of impact from punches and stuff, where it's, yeah. like, it feels much, like, it. it's quick and fast, but there's a lot of weight behind it, and yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. probably and the best thing. Speaking that, of, yeah. speaking of Miles Morales, remember in Miles Morales how they sort of took the Spider-Man soundtrack, but added, like, an, a new element to it? Like um, a, an underground kind of like yeah electronic kind of um, element to it yeah 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 I, I'm sensing a, yeah I'm <laughs> sensing a similar thing with this where they've still like the soundtrack in this game they've still got the same like the uh, drum beats and kind of uh, you know um, that kind of vibe going on but there's a lot more sort of electronic stuff underneath. Hmm. I, I I didn't pay much attention to the music, but you're probably right. I I yeah. wouldn't. Be yeah, I only noticed on my second games. time watching it. But... Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I I'll I'll just quickly shout out. Sorry. The the biggest the biggest improvement that I feel like this game makes over the first is the fact that the UI it's so much cleaner. It's not like health bar, compass, um, XP, uh, weapons. Oh, sorry, like, uh, potions, weapons. Like, it's just all condensed into the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It looks perfect. Like... <laughs> it does look very good. Yeah. It, once... looks, it looks so much cleaner. I'm I'm surprised we don't seem to have any compass or minimap on the screen at all at the moment, either. I'm yeah. not sure if it's just because we're in a story mission or something, but I, I, it'll be interesting to see whether they, like, completely fool, like, if they completely go the Ghost of Tsushima route and just don't have any on-screen indicators of, like, a map or compass at all. That'll be really yeah. interesting. Um, also, real quick, sorry, does anyone have the tweet? Um, there was a the tweet? tweet? There was a tweet after the showcase that Dory was about to read out, but we went, uh, we, we signed off too quickly. Oh. oh, uh, yeah. So I remember the tweet. Um, the tweet was from the team that they didn't have a specific release date yet in mind, um, but development is going smoothly and they will have news for yeah. us soon. That was basically the gist of it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think this will be coming out in September. I, I think it'll be. I, think, I think it'll be no. I, I think it'll be November at the earliest. To be honest. Uh, I, I'm leaning on like next year now. Personally. Yeah, like like really? realistically. Yeah. Wow. I realistically, think... I think yeah, next right. year, but like I, I'd say November at the earliest if it, stage. Yeah, if, it get, the earliest November. Yeah. if it does get pushed yeah. back to next year, does that mean the only thing Sony has left this year is Ratchet and Clank? Well, Kano. That, Kano that's yeah. not really a Sony. That's coming out on PC as well. That's fair, but it's you know it's on console exclusive. But but I, like I told you before, like I said. Before, live stream that sony relies on third party in november like their their mark the money maker is call of duty and battlefield and that's where most playstation players are going to be playing so they don't yeah. they don't they, they don't get too worried about the fall anymore like they used to a lot of their games come out in the spring now i think horizon if it comes out next year it will come out early next year like january february march like, and that would that quarter. would be that would be five years after the, yeah the first game no, i could be wrong I, it might come out in october i i, I think it's gonna and maybe March of the at the latest, if I had a guess, I thought September, but then not showing the release date kind of makes. And then yeah. way, the way they the, that wording doesn't sound like it's a couple months away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but then you have to think. Uh, Sony first party games they they do this now, where they don't have a release date until they have a release date, and they show it in like a PlayStation blog post when they announce all the different sure. editions of the game and the pre orders sure. and what have you. I'm just saying, I'm not getting my hopes up that it's coming yeah, out yeah. like September. But... For sure. No, no. Um, oh, the one last thing we didn't mention is her Kingdom Hearts anime esque break limit yeah. that she did. Yeah. It was so like fighting game over the top, and I'm absolutely here for it. It's... I, I love it. I'm... Same, same. Thank it, you, Seth. It gives me it, the, the fact, like, how not staged, but like, 
like how cool the like you know you had the um the brute who really sounds like he was being voiced by Troy Baker, funnily enough. Hollywood. But the what, yeah, when you had the brute say something like um getting tired yet or something, and then she does the the anime alt, and then yeah. like you have her line going, it's like not even a little bit or something like that. It. It sounds like it, it kind of reminds me of like the um, Last of Us Part Two, where it's like in the trailers, like we'd see something like with the animations or whatnot, and and we go like, oh, that's scripted, like you know that that that's there's no way that's um legit, and then like we would get into the game and realize, oh wait, that actually does happen in the game with yeah. the AI interacting one. Like it's it, just it seems really well set up in that yeah. way. Yeah. So to yeah, exactly. So in yeah, summary, I... I love the mix between. Sekiro and Breath of the Wild, and the in the and just I, I, oh one last thing I know people are really upset about the thirty frames per second that, that was a big controversy. I saw a lot of Xbox guys kind of downplaying this game. I'm not was that a fanboy. Was that thirty FPS? Yeah, that was thirty FPS. But I'm Holy not shit. worried about I'm not worried about that though because there will be a performance mode. So I, it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that looked like the smoothest thirty FPS that I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, that's what people like, were saying. I didn't yeah. jump out. It's hard to say because I we watched the 1080p stream and it was blurry. Mm. Uh, and, and watch I mean, the, watch this in 4K if you haven't already. It's like 10 times better, 100 times better. Yeah. Listen, I'm I will sacrifice 60 fps any day of the week for that fog. Mm -hmm. No, that's because fog. it's because you just take photos everywhere, no. James. But that's that the fog, it really is. If you're not taking it really photos, is. the fog. Gameplay is king, and, and that kind of ties in with performance. Is Sixty for I would take Fog frame rate over king. graphics any day. I, I want to say, I want to say dead. for myself, for, for myself, like I will take, you know, cutting sixty FPS or cutting any amount of things, not for fog, but for like I'm glad this is PS4, PS5 because it is only going to get tougher yeah. for people to get PS5s, and like I understand that's going to mean some limitations, some cuts to the PS5 version maybe, but like I'm okay with that personally. Um, I know it's it's hard to miss something that isn't there and isn't put in the game in the first place, but like mm. I feel like after they already made the first game, they know their limits better. They know what to put on a PS4 and what it can handle and what it can't. Um, you know, people can make their jokes about jet engines or whatever, but like I'm genuinely glad that it's going to be on PS4 and PS5 because getting PS5 is a heck of a time. Uh, it takes yeah. way too long just to get one. I uh, I don't know how they're going to handle the you know you know that scene where the mammoth crashed through the wall. And there was like you yeah. know debris everywhere. I don't. The PS4 I, I is. Can, I don't know how the PS4 is going to handle that. Honestly. I can see the PS4 handling that. No, that I, thing's going to fly out your window. That. that thing's going to blast off. <laughs> and... it, it's going to. It's going to create its own sentience and just just walk off. Fly out legs yeah. and just walk off. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I don't, when I, I see it handling that, I just don't see it handling the fog. Um, no. Like some I'm of those lush you, environments. They they shouldn't have called this Forbidden West. They should have called it Forbidden Fog. And just it, yeah. it wouldn't have PS4 just wouldn't have been able to handle it. I don't know how yeah. this game I don't know I, yeah, I'm yeah. curious how well, it's gonna run because I don't see this yeah. game running. That you know, I, I think Dragon Quest uh yeah. developers are really influenced by this title set because uh they also think of uh, the West as forbidden <laughs> to bring games to. Oh, Sorry, Dory, you said Christ. you said you said Dragon Quest, I think you meant Dragon Age. <laughs> anyway, um that's our uh, running gag for this episode everybody. My um yep. my closing thought is um Mitch like you were saying just in a but in a more general sense. Um yeah. the whole the vibe that this gave me as as amazing as it looked was sort of like a I don't want to say fake but kind of like a scripted on stage. A falsified sort of realism. It everything it, it everything looks... seemed Everything seemed like it was on a stage, like uh, yeah, it, like there was stage lights and like a movie uh, set or something like that. Like everything seemed to go just a bit too perfectly. Like you know, she starts running away and she's like, "Oh, I just happened to find a bunch of um, you know, like rafters and stuff I can climb off." Like, I'm not like I'm not gonna accuse them of faking it, but it like I definitely get that same vibe. You get, I think it's also hey, just it, because in that sense, it's like it, it is a scripted mission. It will be. Yeah, so it's well, all. I mean, that'd be set up that way. Yeah, and that's and that's my next point. Like, it it's probably the most linear we've ever seen Horizon be, outside of you know those freaking freaking linear storybook those freaking linear missions in the first game where you just had to listen to all those oh, 
video and the audio logs just constantly. But anyways, um, I will never not get over those missions in the first game. That was a horrible way to deliver your exposition. But it it seems like it's probably the most linear like horizon has been out in the open world if that makes sense like it reminds me of a last of us almost like the, I the mean, gameplay demo like even... i don't know yeah. i'm not worried about no, that. for sure oh, but even... yeah I'm, I'm not gonna I, say it's I, a full i didn't game, notice but... this i didn't notice this at all it just looked gorgeous i didn't either but maybe yeah. i don't well i think upon game. it looked it looked great to me first inspection as well but upon further inspection it's like the lighting was just a little too perfect it's like I it kind of to... It's the game like looks too good. <laughs> it looks too good. So are um, we are we on the this looks too good to be true train? Like what is going on? No, no, no. But I, I'm just saying. Can, like, can you if, explain why you guys are so negative tonight? Like you guys are just no, really negative. Negative. Wait, it's not, wait, yeah. wait, we're just skeptic. I'm not we're saying the, it looks. I'm not saying skeptic. it looks bad. It looks fantastic. Um, and I think the the constant lighting on Aloy kind of looks. It kind of fits that style, but just the whole thing had an air of falsity around it. I I don't share. I, I mean, I didn't notice the same sort of things as you, James. Especially about the lighting. I I wouldn't even say any of my criticisms were like a bad thing. Like I, I think it's really cool that this was a much more linear cinematic mission, and I hope that we get a lot more of them in the final game. I don't but, think it's gonna be linear at all. I think it's just just one section. It. it, it I mean, it might, it might be like it. It kind of again. It reminds me of like the Last of Us, or like more, more so like um the. It, it kind of gave off the same vibes like the Marvel Spider Man mission, if that makes sense. Like I the get... gameplay demo they showed off, where it's like yeah. it's in the open world, but you're on like you're you're at least in a set area that you have to explore and work your way through. Like, yeah. There's probably there's probably different paths and routes and stuff you can take in the final game. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you could take on that entire herd of um, whatever they called it, like the things with chainsaw teeth or whatever. Raptors. You could probably take yeah raptors or whatever. Like you could yeah those ones. Like you could take them on. Like in the final game, you can either instead of running away, you could probably just take them on and kill them yeah. and then move on from there. Like yeah, you probably have to kill there's... every. Day every dinosaur in the game to get the platinum like the first game oh god that platinum's a chore and a half but yeah oh no, it was <laughs> easy i got it twice so it was pretty easy platinum. yeah i got it okay i still need to work my way through it then um i never did it but i also i don't care about trophies yeah yeah that's i'm fair. a trophy horror so we know steph we know yeah <laughs> just give me five, five dollar horror when it comes to trophies give me a dollar right. I'll, buy, I'll buy a platinum i'll yeah. buy that for right, a dollar well, do we? Does anybody else have any closing thoughts on the game? Like, I I feel like we're all in agreement that this looks pretty great. Yeah, you know, like it's. I don't think it looks. I, like I have, I have no, literally no serious criticisms of this trailer. It looked amazing. Yeah. I'm hyped for this game. It's day one. It's pre-order. Yeah. It's whatever. Uh, uh, it's yeah. gonna be my game of the year yeah. if it comes out this year. My only, my only criticism, my only criticism would be the 30 frames, but it's gonna have a performance mode, so I'm not. Uh, it's, I, a, I was, it's a yeah. point. It's gonna be 60 frames. I, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a given that, especially for these Sony presentations, that they're going to have their games in graphics mode. Yeah, and to then, show off and the then even Miles, Miles had an option, and then eventually we got a third option that had both ray tracing yeah. and performance, sixty so. FPS. Yeah, exactly. Which so I'm not I feel like should that. be I feel like that should be a standard in all games, but I know certain games might not yeah. have the capabilities to. But okay. I mean, either way, best well, of both worlds. Well, one, I mean, one more thing before we move on. The yep. face, the face, facial animations were way better. Like the oh, character absolutely. models, like, all looks Definitely. way better. Well, the the I feel like the art style as well looked a mm -hmm. lot better. Like the the character models looked a lot more cleaner. They looked yeah. Clean. I, I think it was one of you guys. I might have been James. Might have been Dory. Like you mentioned, it looked like a Disney movie trailer. Like it, it's it, it, it walks. Was that, was it yeah, I, I mentioned maybe. maybe. I definitely said that what, it looks like guys. an animated movie at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Pixar it movie. walks. It yeah. yeah, it walks that really fine line between looking like an animated, like sort of stylized movie, but yeah. also looking s super realistic. Yeah. Mm. My my um my only nitpick is that the whoever designed the cinematics for that the they chose a couple of unflattering angles. Um, but there's just a tiny, tiny nitpick. Not even, not even I'm that s skeptical, James. Oh, away, away with you. No. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah, all right. Um, we all, we well, all agree, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we all agree. Yeah, it looks agree. really good, and we hope that it comes sooner rather than later, but not too soon to the fact that it ends up being a rushed product. Or that the developers have to crunch on it. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping for a fall release, or or if not, yeah. then, then quarter four release. October Absolutely. would be would be great. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good number. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll move on to our final segment now. Uh, but I'll quickly have to grab my notebook out because I have some things in there. So just give me like thirty seconds, and I'll be right back. Okay. Right, let's um, talk let's, shit about Mitch. Let's let's fill time, 30, gang. 29. Um, cause I don't want to have to make a cut here in the edit. So let's, let's talk about, so what do you guys really think of Mitch? You know, I don't know. Mitch has got a cool accent and all, but like, I don't know. He just like needs to chill out a bit more, you know, not be so skeptical and negative all the time. I think yeah. he's got some bad takes. I'm always going to, it's gonna always going to be a five hour podcast when he's on. Just, this is how it yeah. is. Did, did you Strength. hear, did you hear when he called Dragon Quest, Dragon Age? What? How many? How many? Wait, what? What are we at for uh, time right now? How long has uh, it oh, been? Two and a half hours? Yeah, uh, it's been two minutes for two hours for you. Yeah. Oh wow. That, yeah. So, I'm still not Damn. cutting this. I'm still not cutting this out. We need to fill this time. Uh, uh, I, I just thought. I just thought the spotlights being shorter would make it. You know. No. Okay. Hours. Those spotlights. Those spotlights. For you guys, we use the full ten minutes for every spotlight. Well, I had a lot to say about the makeup. No, I don't. Makeup I, don't I didn't mind it. it. That was that was still way better than previous episodes where it was like yeah. an hour and a half. So it, it's only because there was so much news this week. We would this episode, we would been, yeah. On this a normal, on a normal, so great. yeah. On a, on a normal week, we would have been done like an hour ago, like because the spotlight was like actually only like fifty minutes, not even. Yeah. So it's just because there's so much to talk about. There's so it's much, gonna be so like that. Like it's probably gonna be like that for the next. God, I weeks. love E3 season. This is my favorite season of gaming. So I'm, I can talk about games yeah. all night. I don't, I don't yeah. care if this is a seven hour. One. I kind of wish it wasn't so spread out, but when you do a podcast, there are benefits. Yeah, uh, I love this time of year. So. How is he not? Fun? We can't fill this much time. Hurry it's up, like Mitch. Seconds. Hurry you said up. Thirty seconds. You did say thirty seconds. This is the longest thirty seconds. Uh, from now on, every second is, we're we're, deduct, we're deducting his pay. So, yeah. <laughs> you guys are getting paid. <laughs> okay, okay. Let you me, have to get those. It was here all along. Uh, let me just write down you guys' name. Mother, do what I do. Just James. have a laptop in front of you. Or oh no, I've got I've got everything on the laptop. I just need to write down your name so I can keep tally of the points. No tablet or. Okay, how's this gonna work? No. What's the game? Alrighty. Well, uh, wait. Am I? Okay, I'm unmuted. That's good. Okay. Well, uh, we'll head into the the final segment of this um episode, I guess, which will be the game, uh, which I'm hosting as well. Um, so the rules are pretty simple for this one. This is essentially, this is a game where you have to guess some famous game quotes that I've put together. Um, so you'll essentially either be guessing the person who says the quote. Or which game it's from. So, both of those things they're w worth one point each. If you get both the person and the game, you get two points. So you'll you guys will use each you'll use each of your names as a buzzer, and if you can guess both, um, you get the, both of the points. But if you can't guess one one or the other, uh, within five to ten seconds, it's passed on to someone else. Um, any other questions? Anything I need to clarify for you guys at all? So we're just nope. saying our name to buzz in. Yep. So I'll say a quote, and then once you guys think you've got it, you just say your name to um buzz in. I'll say, okay, what is it? And then you give me either the person or the game it's from. If you get one, then you'll have about five to ten seconds, and then I'll have to pass on to the next person. And if no one gets it within their allotted uh, times, then, well, the points are sort of null and void there. Sounds good. All right. Most of these are pretty easy because it's surprisingly hard getting. There's no in between really. There's that you either have quotes that everyone recognizes or ones that are super obscure that probably no one will get. Um, but I, I guess we'll see how it goes. Is yep. this PlayStation only or is it on? All no, it, it's it's from all platforms. But I'd I'd say it's fairly recognizable. So most of you guys will get them. All right. So, um, any of you guys have any other questions? Just sort of ask and we can pause it. 
So we have the first one, which is a man chooses, a slave obeys. Oh, Dory, Dory, Dory. It's uh, Bioshock one, and then the person who said it is Andrew Ryan. Correct. Wait. All right. Um, we have. All right. So the next one is it's high noon. Uh, James McCree, <laughs> Overwatch. McCree, Overwatch. I wow, I would have said this. Red Dead. <laughs> oh shit! I put that in Sebs. Never mind, James. All right. Um, oh, there you go. All right. The <laughs> next one. Uh, would you kindly? I'll take. I'll take either two names for this one. Dory. Dory. Uh, again, it's Bioshock one, uh, and then it's either Andrew Ryan or it's. Well, this is kind of spoilers, but it's one of his like hen- I don't remember his henchman's name. I was just gonna say Andrew Ryan. Uh, do you? Does anybody else have the answer to it? I don't remember his name. I don't remember the I know name. It's a- yeah, I don't remember the name. Okay, so Dory's got the the game, just not who says it. Uh, James, do you have it at all? I've never played the game. Never played the game. Okay, so I would have accepted either Frank Fontaine or Atlas oh! for that one. Frank Montaigne, yep, that's right. Yep. Okay. Um, so the next one is the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. I'm bad at quotes. I feel like I'm I've heard either. that. I feel like uh, I feel like I've heard I'll, that. I'll I'll give you guys a hint if you need one. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. <laughs> I need a memory jog for that one. I have no idea. I'm I'm too big. I'm too like big picture. I'm horrible with dialogue, so I'm just not a detail um, oriented for this game. What's, what What's a good quote from that? Um, the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference. Oh, that's G Man from Half Life. Oh, Sebastian, that's G Man from Half Life, isn't it? Uh, which Half Life? Half Life One. <laughs> Half Life. Uh, uh five. Damn. Four, two, three, two. three. Okay, it it is two. That's right. where I've heard it from. When he said that, yeah. uh, when he said it that way, at the start of the game, I'm pretty sure, right at the beginning. Yeah, it sounded very yeah. familiar. I just couldn't think of it. Yeah, it sounded right. familiar to me too, and I've never even played Half Life mm. too. What? <laughs> I know, I know. It's a great game. I recommend it. Someday, it's a, someday. It's a, yeah, it's okay, Dory. I haven't either. It's on sale for like two right. dollars all the time. Mm. It's mm. the Last all of Us right. Part Two of PC gaming. <laughs> no, I agree. That's actually true. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, the next one. So we have. Do you know the definition of insanity, James? Oh, James. I could get used to this. Um, <laughs> it's uh, that's vast from Far Cry Three. Yep. Correct. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, so the, my name's too long. Next... It's freaking nine letters. <laughs> just, <laughs> say like just say Seb. Just Seb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say just say I Seb. Got three syllables. Uh, that's all. That's all. I'll, I'll accept Seb. Um, all right. So oh, the next one. Um, I used to be an adventurer like you. Which oh, uh, Dory, 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 Dory. It was me. Come on, it was me. I think I said that first. <laughs> I said it first. I... It was easily me. I want to give it to Dory, unfortunately. What? Um, I said it first. I definitely said that. I right. demand a recap. You did? I definitely said that. <laughs> That's the right, full James finish. <laughs> In your realistic opinion, you said it well, first. Because I look, feel look, like it's me. I, I'm, I'm only going to be, I'm only be able to get half of this. I don't even know who said it. I In, just my, know. in my opinion, I said it first. Mm. So I'm going to have to check the recording for this one. Let's give everybody the point. We all know who it is. And we all know what game it is. Okay, well, oh my ha- god, if I, uh, yeah, if I ha- mess up the fucking game, I'm gonna feel mortified. All, right. all, 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 all of you guys shout out the name. All out. No, no, We're all gonna no, say no. out once, right? Out the name. Yeah. Three, right. Two, one, two, one, two, one, three. It's Skyrim. the guard from Skyrim. 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 The guard, the guard, one of the guards from Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, I'll give James the extra point there just because he said the character first, but yeah, you you guys all get yes. one point. Okay. This game is That's definitely right. rigged for James. I know, I know we I know we feel bad for James I, it, that he always loses his game, but <laughs> oh, okay. it, it was, well, it was very it. hard to find non We're FPS we're games over course correcting for James here at this point. I mean yeah, I'm surprised there, there's not more resistance in Shrek quotes. In I'm, this game. <laughs> I'm gonna check the recording. I, I said my name first, definitely. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, they, they were too loud. <laughs> 
but I, I compromised in the end. And you, you got the extra point anyways, James. So I'm not complaining. Yeah, stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Oh, and I'm all out of gum. Sab, sab. Duke sab? Nukem. Duke Nukem. Duke okay, Nukem. Yeah, oh, Duke that's, Nukem. that's actually They Live. Yeah, that's actually They Live. It's Thank both. you. Both. Yeah. Both. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take Duke Nukem. That's fine. All right. Uh, next well, one. Duke Nukem. Well, I mean, I, it's, technic- take it. it's, it's technically Duke Nukem 3D, but like I would have taken any oh, of the oh, oh. games. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That, that, that's fine. You guys ever you guys ever play that? No, 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 no. Great, great, great game, classic. <laughs> Alrighty, um, this can't be for nothing. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Can't be for nothing. Give me an, give me a uh, an impression. Give me like your James. Act it out, James. Uh, okay, I'm only like fifty percent sure, but is it Tess from The Last of Us? Oh. Got the Last of Us. Oh, I knew it was the Last no, of Us. God damn Seb. it! No wait, no. Seb, Seb, do you want to go for it? Is this Ellie? Yep, it is Ellie. Damn it! Okay. Yes, this can't be for nothing. That's right. She does say that. I knew damn it sounds it. so familiar. That. It was like I knew it. Right tip of my it tongue. It was out. killing me. I was like, "Is that the Last of Us?" I'm like, "I'm not sure if that's the Last of Us." And then James fucking takes it. God damn it! <laughs> uh, alrighty, I uh, got a few more left. Um. Right, this one's pretty easy. You want blank? I'll give you blank. What? That that's easy. I mean, all right. Because if I said what the blanks are, it'd give it away immediately. But so the quote is: "You want blank? I'll give you blank." Oh, blank. So, blank. Is this uh, yeah. Jill Jill Valentine in Resident Evil Three? Correct. Damn. Okay. You want stars? I'll give you stars. Exactly. I, I, feel I, like I, I had I, no chance. I, <laughs> I, I could have gotten that. I could have gotten that. Damn it. Yeah, I, I feel like if I said stars, it would just like. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it would have been an all out war between Seb and I yep. on that one. <laughs> yep. All right. That was such um, a great line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Resident Evil 3. The, the, um, all right. Well, I, I'll do this one first. Um, kept you waiting, huh? Oh, Dory. Dory? <laughs> Shit, I don't even know which. Okay, yeah, so yeah how do you know which one? Uh, it's it's Solid Snake first off who says that, uh, and I'm going to say uh, Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriots. I'll, I'll accept any game in the series, really. Okay, yeah. great. No, sure. no, 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 no. It's gonna be, it's gonna be from the game. We're not we're not making exceptions. We're playing. We're in this. I, he I says did the that same like thing. every fucking game. He says it in every did, fucking game. Yeah, it, that and I did the same thing for Duke Nukem as well. Yeah. So heck off, Seb. <laughs> well, I, I right. got it right. It was Duke Nukem. Uh, there was right. only two yeah. games. Duke Nukem yeah, Forever yes. and 3D. <laughs> All right. No, uh, right. Here's like 16 yeah. different fucking games. I don't know which one's Solid. <laughs> which game? Which one is it from? Uh, I would. I just said the Metal Gear Solid series, but like I would have taken you know, oh. Metal Gear Solid Four, Metal Gear oh. Solid Can you, can you Five, again? Zero, Can you see the quote again? Uh, kept you waiting, huh? Sorry, I missed that. Could so, you? Mm-hmm. What took you so long? Stupid series. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which one that's from. Ah, uh, yeah. I-, I would have taken any of the Metal Gear Solid games. <laughs> All right, uh, what's the next one? Uh, these last few are a bit harder, but um, I'll-, I'll see how you guys go with this one. So this one is, if our lives are-, are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. Uh. I'll-, I'll give you guys a hint for this, a couple hints as well if you need it. Do an impression. Uh, if our lives are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. It, it, it's just an American accent. I, James? I can't really. <laughs> James? Um. Okay, let's go with Bioshock Infinite. No. Damn it. All right. Uh, do you want me to give so you guys nice. a hint? Yes, yeah. please. All right. Um, the name of the character and the name of the game are one in the same. Do we get a lifeline? Can I call somebody? It's Gex. <laughs> it's Gex. I would love it if that was Gex. Oh my god. That sounds like something you'd say to. Oh, yeah. Is it? Wait, wait, wait. Is it? It's not. It's not Gex. <laughs> it's not Gex. Um, I'll, I'll think of another. All right. Focus on the writing part, the written and script. Like, think of think of that. That's a that's a pretty good direction to go in. I know what it is. God fucking damn it. 
That's a dead giveaway, Mitch. I don't know how they've not got it yet. <laughs> I'll see how they go. I'll, I'll see how they go, and then um, I'll I'll give it hand it back. Just say it. What is some dragon to a twenty minute thing? If you yeah, know I don't know. I don't I have no idea. Right. Yeah, I'm not All gonna right. get to it. James, it's, Al it's Alan Wake from Alan Wake. Correct. Motherfucker, I would never have gotten that. Well, I've never played the game, but he he said writing, and he said the name is the same as the title. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was trying to think of that, but I couldn't think of a game that had the same. Mm -hmm. That's the only game I know that has the same. Yep. Alrighty. Yep. yep. Okay. Now this one is uh, worth three points. So it's two characters speaking in this one. So it's the two characters plus the game. Okay. So, this, so we have, you have no honor, and then, and you are a slave to it. Oh, Dory. 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 Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got so excited. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, <laughs> and it's Jin and fuck, what's his name? Uh, his uncle. Uh, uh, uncle. Uh, I'll, I'll need the name. No, uh, except that you know it's the uncle. Uh, uh, uncle. Uh, what's his? What's Jin's last name? Uh, Sakai. Sakai. Yeah. Sakai. Uncle uh, Sakai. I don't fucking know. It counts. It's a name. <laughs> he's he's nice a, adoptive uncle. Isn't okay. He? I was gonna say it, I would have taken Lord Shimura as well for that. Lord, Sh Lord Shimura. That's right. I couldn't fucking remember. Yeah. That. No one okay. remembers him as Lord Shimmer. We know that it's the uncle. It's the uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck okay. off, bitch. I know I'm. I'm, I'm I know I'm. Right. I know I'm definitely in last place because I'm just not good. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm in second, maybe first. I'm unlucky. I, I, I from my perspective, you guys seem just about even, but I'll, I'll have to count it up afterwards. All right. Um. Well, for this one though, I'll. This one will be five points, just to. Oh my god! See how you guys. Oh, go. I thought that was the last one. Um, is this the last I one? Oh last yeah, one this, too. this is the last one. Now, there's no character. I'll just need the name of the game for this one. Okay. So five points. Oh my um. God. Okay. So the quote is, and like, no character because no character says this. To kill for yourself is murder. To kill for your government is heroic. Heroic. To kill for entertainment is harmless. That sounds familiar. I'm just gonna guess. Seb, uh, the spec ops, the line, no. Correct. It is. What? Wow. Nice job, what? Seb. Might, might have brought you back from last place to first place. I don't know. That if he wins because of that, <laughs> I call uh, ridiculousness. I just shot a three pointer. And got I, it. I, I, I. A five pointer actually. A half a half point. court shot. You guys, to be honest, I wasn't expecting anyone to get it that quickly. Um, James, I, I was rooting for you there, but... I would never uh, okay, have done that. So... Alright, so we have James at nine points. We have... Dory at also nine points. Oh no, don't mm. tell me. Don't tell me. And then we have Seb at 13 points. No! Oh! no. <laughs> God damn. So, that was the, that Rick, was the equivalent, uh, that was the Rick, equivalent of... When I tell you, that was the equivalent of me being down court shot buzzer beater. You, you, can't have, you can't have the whole competition rest on one question. Well, we I mean, can all we I can was, all I play was, great games like Spec Ops, James. Like I was originally gonna that. put it at I was originally gonna put it at three points anyway. So James, he would have won nonetheless. I, well, I already won, so. Uh, I think I won. I think I won most of the game. A, I think I won the majority of the game. You uh, let's so. put this this way, James and Dory. You guys were winning up until the very end, which probably sounds. Might sound worse, but you guys were going pretty well for the majority of it. Yeah, not, great. Not, 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 to, <laughs> not to mention the the Alan Wake call was a pretty good one as well. Yeah, yeah. The two. Th All right, well, the, congrats, the two, Seb. The two reasons I got Spec Ops is because a I know it's Mitch is one of the like I just know that, and two, yeah. as soon as you said government, I was like, there's only one game that really like gets into like the horrors of government and massacring people. And I mean the. the the Metal Gear series kind of no, like that one like goes full but... on like murder, like of people, yeah. civilians and shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Great game. We need more games like it. Absolutely. All right. Well, there's the game. Uh, I guess you know we can in the future if we want to do that again, retool it. Then we absolutely can. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, you gonna... I was gonna say maybe maybe we should do a thing where like the winner always gets 
be the host of the next game. Like, I'm not saying just because I won, but like we could do something like that. I still think we should do poorly describe your favorite games and have other people guess them. Are we doing that next week? I'll, I'll yeah, try and get that together say. for next week. Okay, because I yeah. I could I could do that too. But yeah, that sounds like a fun game. I haven't hosted a game in a while. I'm just saying. I haven't hosted. You can, a game. You have one. Have you? That was just a suggestion. I can't oh yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I can't remember the last one I did. I think the last one I did might have been the Crusader Kings three game. Oh maybe. That was a good one. That was a good one. I mean, I did two. I did oh, two in a row. So someone else can do it. Mm. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, that wraps up wraps up this very tumultuous slash eventful episode of the PS Premier Podcast. Uh, thank you for listening all the way through if you have. Um, now, just as always, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube as well as follow us on your preferred podcast platform. Um, can I, can I just and, say, and before we end, yeah, image, um, sure. considering the fact that I threw this uh, hosting thing on you at the very last minute, you've done a terrific job. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. I mean, you. Uh, I'm going to be very skeptical of Mitch, as he's been skeptical the whole night, but I, I think he's done an okay <laughs> job overall, you know? I, I'll take an okay. I'll take an okay. Seb, why, why haven't I heard any compliments from you? What are you, what are you <laughs> doing there? Because uh -huh. you, you soured my night all night. <laughs> I, I, I he gave game. you, he I gave you a free I win. gave you the game. <laughs> I hope James is the host next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, glad guess I'm, glad, I'm glad you're not going to be on next week. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> wow, Seb is just going to hold him. Right. Hey, do you know what? See, no, Mitch, no, if no, I were no. you, if I were you, I would take that trophy and give Too it late. to me. Trophy's yeah. already mine. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've already no, shipped no. it to him. So I, it's too late, no, you did, you did an absolutely great job. Uh, I think I think you, you probably have done the maybe the best like line delivery of the intro that between the like all of the three of us i think you nailed that like you didn't even has you didn't stutter on any word or anything you just you just ran with that so I i'm not saying you should be the host i'm just you. saying like, <laughs> that you absolutely nailed the yes. intro no, yeah that's so and, good thank you and i'm glad you said hit the like button in the beginning because we need to keep doing because hit the like <laughs> button people hit the freaking like button it really helps yes. us and we really appreciate it you heard the man. Subscribe. Hit the yes. like button. Do all that stuff. Turn hit on the that bell. bell to... Yeah, hit that bell. Enter our giveaway. We don't have a giveaway. Don't listen to that. <laughs> Subscribe right. to the uh... Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> all righty. Um, well, do we anybody have any other content or anything else they want to plug? I, I have go, something or... to say. So long and thanks for all the fish on episode 42. Those who get it, get it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Terrific reference. Um, great book and movie. Yep, awesome. Uh, anyone else want to plug anything before we go? No, nothing else we want to mention at all? Or Y'all should really eat cinnamon swirl bread. It, like, tastes amazing. Especially with, like, raisins <laughs> in it and, like, like toasting it and then, like, putting some butter on it. It's super good. I, uh, I want to plug... Uh, okay. I want to plug sleep. Uh, sleep? Get, you, get plenty what, of sleep. You, you look... You look amazingly awake right now, James. I don't. Yeah, know if, if people are wondering why James is suddenly not the host for an episode, it's because he has not done enough of this lately. <laughs> exactly. No. And for audio only listeners, that is sleep, because yes. he's had a very busy day. And I mean, if James I'm a busy guy, to... I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I, I want to plug something. Uh, more seriously, I want to plug something. Um, so I was recently on the draft bunks, um, doing a uh, oh, Muppets, yeah. Muppets draft. Um, so please oh, check yeah. out all of my excellent uh, picks right there. I've got a great lineup. Uh, it really can't be beat. I've got the iconic duo um, that are that are the best duo of all time. Um, yeah, it's a really fun draft. Uh, everyone has great picks, honestly. Uh, it's a re It was a really fun time, and we just talked about the Muppets for like an hour and a half. So, uh, And we have some surprises at the intro, and it's really fun. So just join the Draft Punks Discord or listen to it on Anchor, uh, yeah. and it was a really fun time. I, would, I love I these uh, ones. I love yeah. these long outros we do. I would so, like yeah. to. I would like to plug. I would like to plug Muppets Treasure Island. Uh, it's one of the most nice <laughs> favorite movies. <laughs> Jesus it, it, it's probably the best version of Treasure Island. And... You shouldn't have opened the floor to all of us because now we're just gonna keep plugging. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Someone... <laughs> work, I was work, waiting work. for someone to plug the Spelunkers. Because you guys were both on it recently, and no one's plugged it at the end. Here. But he already said that earlier. Yeah, yeah. I know. Earlier you were also on there. I, I, I... Okay, fine. Both James and I have been on the spelunkers. James to talk about a really boring game, and me to talk about a very exciting game. You wrote in a question <laughs> for Death Stranding. Yeah, I did, and it was a very sarcastic, hyperbolic question.
We asked. I'm very that. curious yeah, how y'all responded to, to it. Yeah, he's playing a he's playing a UPS sim. <laughs> yeah. Norman Reedus and the Magic Fetus. All right. Well, I'll wrap up this episode. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> is, that a, is that the new Harry Potter film? No. <laughs> Can I real quick uh, while we're on okay. the subject? I. <laughs> No, did you, did you know? No did I don't you, want to talk did about you Norman know Reedus's feet. When, when Norman Reedus takes a dump in in Death Stranding, they throw an advertisement for a ride with Norman Reedus on AMC in your face, and it's the best thing ever. That is all. It's a pretty meta game, so uh, that's great. Oh, it's Death so Stranding. You, is all so, right. what do you guys think of the Walking Dead? Like when Norman Reedus is on. <laughs> okay, oh, we. Jesus Christ. Christ. All right, now all right, we're, now we're, we're going. It's the final everybody. season, guys. Yeah. All right, see, see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>